Hi, I'm rapper, actor, model Lil Dicky, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about a pretty glaring issue within our society, and that's condom usage. Guys, I think we've gotten pretty laissez-faire about wearing condoms, and to be honest, I find it disgusting. People are having unprotected sex without even batting an eye. It's insane. It doesn't make one shred of sense to me. How can you even enjoy it? I'd be so stressed out the whole time. I won't bore you guys with the stats, but just know that STDs and unintended pregnancies are very real, and there's nothing better than peace of mind, and that's what a Trojan can provide you, the pleasure of protection. So be an adult and put a condom on. Log Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. Oh, man. <laughs> How are you doing today, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of True Capitalist Radio. And of course, folks, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 288 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist radio broadcast. And before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist radio is in effect and in the house. And we're live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We got all kinds of Facebook like buttons, retweet this button, share this button's right there on the page, right next to the player right there. Use and abuse those buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking click, for Christ's sake. And without any further ado, if you haven't already done so, folks, please go ahead and follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is PoliticsGhost. All one word, no underscores. PoliticsGhost is the name to follow. Anyway, folks, uh, for you folks that were unaware, because you don't follow me on Twitter, I did have a spontaneous random Sunday edition. I called it an emergency broadcast of a serious nature, and that is uh, yesterday's episode number 287, where we have a serious discussion about the uh, Islamic terrorist act that happened in Orlando at uh, the LGBTQ club Pulse out there where uh, numbers, of course, are still at 50. I know that I want to make a retraction. Somebody told me on Twitter that the uh, casualty count went up to 78 or something of that nature. Uh, According to all reports, it's still 50. Uh, There are people clinging to life, uh, over 50, uh, still wounded, uh, still uh, in the hospital, so on and so forth. And uh, as the uh, more and more facts start to unravel, we're starting to find out a little bit more about the uh, terrorist himself, Omar Mateen, and we're also starting to find out about his family as well. But before we get into anything of that nature, because there's a lot to go over in that regard, folks, did you all see the speech that Donald Trump gave today? I mean, good God, what a beautiful, another historic speech by a man that is a true patriot, I mean, uh, let me tell you, I almost got chills because it almost sounded like as if, and I don't mean to toot my own horn here, but it almost seems as if he is listening to this broadcast. And uh, I'm just saying, I'm I'm just saying, I'm not joking around, folks. If you have not heard this speech, and if you are a critic of Donald Trump, I strongly advise you to listen to the speech that he gave today. Uh, Today is Monday, June uh, 13th, 2016. Uh, I believe he gave it in Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not, I could be wrong. But what a beautiful speech where he lays out exactly his immigration policy. He basically tells everybody that we need to start calling what is going on what it is, and it is Islamic terrorism. He is basically calling out Hillary Clinton, saying that she cannot continue to press 
these particular immigration policies that are allowing unvetted Islamic potential terrorists from Syria to come into this country in mass quantities, uh, calling her out saying she cannot back this particular irresponsible immigration Islamic policy and still protect those that are within the LGBTQ. And moreover, folks, if you are a uh, an individual that is in, a part of the community of the LGBTQ, I strongly advise you to watch this speech as well. I mean, I think that you folks have uh, Donald Trump all wrong as it relates to his uh, particular views on your community. I mean, he basically stated that people should be able to live freely and express themselves in a free society. He even used the words tolerant. I'm I'm telling you, if you have not listened to the damn speech, you need to please listen to it. It's an unbelievable speech. It's an hour or so long, but it's definitely worth it. I'm telling you this right now. It's definitely worth it. And he calls out Barack Obama. He calls out Hillary Clinton. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's utterly beautiful. I don't think that the lamestream mainstream media is going to give the amount of coverage that this speech should have as opposed to all the other garbage that they're just trying to sit here and spew out as fact when they know it's just outright lies, for Christ's sake. And that's why I'm strongly advising everybody, if you did not listen to this speech that Donald Trump gave today, well, by God, please go and listen to it especially if you're those that are in the LGBTQ community, folks. I'm telling you, I don't understand why you're against Donald Trump. All right? I mean, this man, is he wants an open society, and not to mention an open society where everybody can live freely. He wants safety. And you see, LGBTQ, this is what I was alluding to yesterday. This is what the whole show was about yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I basically called out the liberals and said, look, it's either one or the other liberals. You either want Sharia law, where women are in burqas and they're oppressed and they kill homosexuals, uh, and, uh, you know, you pray six times a day. And I mean, just this, this, this ridiculous, fanatical, uh, fundamentalist, religious, zealot type of uh, perspective, or are we going to embrace a tolerant society in which uh, the LGBTQ are amongst our society for which we are tolerant. And I think that the LGBTQ, this is a defining moment for your community. Now, I know that you have this hashtag, love is love, and you're going to defeat uh, you know, Islamic terrorism with love. Why don't you go out there to the Middle East and go and see how that is going to hold over in preventing these wild Jehudis from either beheading you or throwing you off buildings, all right? I mean, that seems to be some sort of, uh, I think that's some sort of practice that uh, if you're a homosexual, they throw you off buildings. I, I really don't know. There's so many weird, violent tenets to this particular religion. And let me tell you something else about this Donald Trump speech. He also puts Islamic extremism and, and Islamic terrorism on the line. He, he ain't afraid to say it. And he also said a big F you to political correctness, boy. You understand that? That's goddamn right. That's what we all should do. We should all say F you to political correctness, man. This is America. Whatever happened to freedom of speech? Whatever happened to freedom of expression? Whatever happened to freedom of the mind, for Christ's sake? No, these damn liberals, as I've stated time and time and time again, they are totalitarian freaks. I mean, they want to be in every single nook and cranny of your life. I mean, why do you think they want to take over your health care? They've taken over your health care. I mean, what do you think Obamacare is, man? They've taken over your health care. What Obamacare is for you people that are still, oh, no, it was a good thing. Oh, yeah. It gave a monopoly over your health to the health insurance industry. All right? I'm serious. I mean, I don't understand why anybody continues to still tout this as something good for America. This is a monopoly over your health by the health insurance industry. That is Obamacare. And why is it a monopoly? Well, folks, I've always suggested and told you that a monopoly can only be a monopoly if it is enforced by a government. A monopoly cannot sustain itself by itself. 
It has to have government force, government coercion, government manipulation, government taxation, government special tax breaks, and that is what this whole Obamacare is all about. But I'm digressing, of course. I definitely want to implore everybody to watch today's speech. It's on YouTube. It's all over the place. Donald Trump gave a great speech. I'm telling you, it's just unbelievable. Calling out Hillary Rotten and saying, look, Hillary Rotten, you can't back being openly Islamic about your immigration policy. And he calls her out about the immigration policy. I mean, we've talked about her immigration. We've said that uh, she wants to suspend, uh, you know, deportations. Uh, she wants to give 100 days, the first 100 days of her administration, she's going to give anybody who's here amnesty. Oh, if that isn't calling the floodgates, opening up the damn floodgates, for Christ's sake, this is Hillary Clinton's immigration policy. And Donald Trump says, if you're going to oblige this policy that threatens the safety of our national security and the safety of the LGBTQ community, you cannot be for this immigration policy and claim to be uh, f in favor of the LGBTQ community. I mean, it's just bottom line. And that's why I'm telling you, for you folks that are in the LGBTQ community, you start recognizing what's going on here, all right? You need to recognize what's going on here. I know y'all like to party. I know y'all like to go out to the club, but y'all need to start taking things a little bit more serious. I think you need to start doing some YouTube searches about what the hell's going on out there in Europe, all right? See how that migrant situation is working out for them and how they're being completely dominated by the migrants that they accepted with love. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, you need to stop a little bit, to, you know, put down the, the drag dress all right, you could do the drag show later. You could you could go out and wh whatever it is that you do, you know, t uh, leprechaun your ass, uh, you know, go look for barebacks, uh, you know, what whatever it is that you do. I don't know what it is you do. All right, I don't know what it is you do, but whatever it is you do, stop doing it. All right, and start looking up what is happening. Migrant crisis Europe, and take a look at the videos that are coming in. All right, take a look at the videos that are being posted right now, boy. And let me tell you what is happening there. They accepted those migrants with open arms and, quote, love. I mean, that's what they did. They were like, oh, yes, let's go ahead and bring the uh, – well, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to be sounding like my feller from Britannia, but you know what I'm saying. Let's bring them in with love. And they accepted these migrants with love, and now they are completely dominating them. Now they are raping their women. Now they are beating up the men because the men have been pussified, utterly pussified by socialism for the past 25 years. And they don't know how to defend themselves because they took away the goddamn guns, you idiots. They took away the goddamn guns over there in Europe, and that's why Europe is being dominated by a bunch of wild Jehudis that the damn bureaucrats over there brought in. And that's exactly the model that these liberals, and I'm talking about Barack Obama, I'm talking about Hillary Clinton, are doing to this country today. They are bringing in the problem, so when the problem happens, they can, let, they can justify their totalitarianism. They can justify martial law. They can justify suspending elections. They can justify these things. Don't you understand that? Jesus Christ. I mean, how long is it going to take for you all to comprehend? And let me tell you something. Donald Trump alluded to this in this speech that I am imploring you to go out and see. Of course, after the show, but I'm serious. Now, I know that, uh, as you could see from the description, that this show, this subject is going to dominate this particular show, unfortunately, and I want to extend my apologies to my brethren out there in the international community that uh, listen to this show because I do cover a wide range of topics, uh, but unfortunately, I know what is happening with this particular tragedy in Orlando. It is being politicized by the left, and they're doing damage control today, and I'll tell you what they're doing in a minute, but this is being politicized. They are trying to take away our Second Amendment constitutionally protected right, and they are utilizing 
this particular situation to do so, and not to mention they are attempting to assassinate the character of Donald Trump in the media. Do you see what they're trying to do to him? I mean, good God. I mean, I'm telling you, you cannot listen to these talking heads on the lamestream mainstream media anymore, folks. You can't do it. You can't do it. I'm telling you this right now. With this day and age, when you've got the phone, all right, the smartphone, where you can just sit in your crapper and just search for any kind of news you want to, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, what else are you doing? Huh? What are you, what are you playing with your pecker shaft? Huh? What are you, shaving your sack or something? I mean, give me a damn break, man. I mean, you need to be in control of your own information. You need to be in control of your own news, for Christ's sake. And you need to be enlightened properly, not suggested, not suggested. And that's exactly what these people in the lamestream, mainstream media do. They just suggest the news. They are not telling you the news. Do you understand that? They are trying to give you talking points that are very easy so that you can go out and regurgitate them in your little social circles so that it can make you sound important or smart or intelligent when you know deep down inside you ain't crap, all right? When you know deep down inside you ain't crap. So that's why I'm saying stop being a lazy prick. It's time for you to start getting informed and stop letting these goddamn lamestream, mainstream, mainstream idiot morons give you the suggested idea that you should be viewing from your perspective. And another thing I liked is I liked that uh, Donald Trump called for Obama to resign yesterday. Did you all see that tweet? I retweeted that tweet. (laughs) He said, look, if Barack Obama refuses once again to say that this particular tragedy in Orlando, Florida at Pulse nightclub was not, quote, Islamic terrorism, then he should resign in disgrace. And he should. But you see what I'm saying? This person that's in power right now, this Barack Obama, he has no shame. Do y'all understand that, liberals? That's why y'all are all pissed off. Y'all are venting your frustration at Donald Trump when you should be venting your frustration at Mr. Yes We Can and I'm with her. You should be venting your frustration at them. They've been in power for the past eight years. I mean, any grievances at this point in time in your life has direct consequence to their policies, to their lawmaking, to their decisions. Why in the blue hell do you insist in your warped perspective in your la-la land space cadet thinking that you need to vent your frustration at Donald Trump. What kind of sense does that make, morons? Can you explain it? What kind of sense does that make, liberals? I'm calling you out. What kind of sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense, all right? It doesn't make any sense, and that's why, once again, I am calling out the LGBTQ community. Now, let me me tell you, I know I freaked out at the end of yesterday's show because somebody retweeted me a tweet of, I don't know, some gay journalist calling out, quote, bigots trying to use this tragedy to go against I mean, basically, he was still saying that, no, you're Islamophobic if you call this Islamic terrorism and and you don't use my community. I mean, just complete uh, cuckoldery. Cuckoldery. I'm not joking around. It's just disgusting. And I freaked out. But look, I've been seeing other tweets of members of the LGBTQ community that are starting to go over to the Trump train and starting to realize that, hey, look, the only reason that we are able to go out and be open and partake in the uh, activities that we like to partake in is because there's a certain element of safety uh, that now the LGBTQ is used to. But unfortunately, your perspective, the ideology that y'all have fallen for politically, politically, I'm talking the liberals, I'm talking Democrats, they have no use for you anymore And the proof is in their immigration policy. They are trying to basically bring in a whole new crop of voters to supersede your relevance so they no longer have to pander to you. I mean, don't you understand that? 
I mean, that's what they're doing in Europe. That's what I keep telling you LGBTQ people to do. Look what's happened to Europe. That's the model that's happening here in America. And these liberals and these Democrats have made it happen. Now, I know a lot of people are going to ask, well, why are they making it happen, Ghost? Why would they do that? I've told you, idiots, time and time again, these people that we are electing into office are not people that care about this country. These are lifelong bureaucrats. I think that you need to understand that and put that word in your head, bureaucrats. All right, a bureaucrat is a lifelong member of public service, all right? Now, I'm not going to argue that, that there are certain elements of government infrastructure that we may need in this regard, but it sure as hell doesn't encompass public service as it relates to climbing up bureaucratic governmental power, all right? And when you elect the so-called uh, experienced politicians, quote-unquote, this is what you get. You get lifelong bureaucrats that are trying to attain the highest level of political power possible in America, and once they do that, for many of them it's just being a senator, for many of them it's just being a congressman. Where else is there to go if you're a career bureaucrat if you have reached the top of the mountain in American politics, international bureaucracy. Do you understand that? These career politicians are agents of international bureaucracy. And that's what I keep telling you folks. And people, I believe, now are starting to recognize what I'm talking about. People before thought it was loco that, uh, you know, no, of course, that's not what it is. Give me a break. No, it is. International bureaucracies like the United Nations, like NATO, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, uh, the IAEA, uh, I mean, just uh, uh, NGOs. Let's not forget NGOs, either non government organizations, which are international nonprofit bureaucracies. All right? So, once again, folks. I implore everyone to not only look at the speech that Donald Trump gave today, but when you start voting once again in this coming election, that we need to start recognizing we need to vote out the problem. And the problem is career politicians, career bureaucrats, career bureaucrats that have not our special interest at hand, but their own bureaucratic special interest at hand. All right? And the proof is in the pudding. Look at where we're at today in America. Look at where we're at today in America. This is their particular fault. This is their fault, man. They're the ones that passed the laws. They're the ones that uh, signed off on the spending bills. They're the ones that signed off on the wars. It's these people's fault. That's why I'm saying Donald Trump's presidency is so damn important. That's why those of us on the Trump train, those of, of us in the capitalist army, we cannot let these damn lamestream, mainstream, idiot talking heads in the media continue to try to shape the narrative for these morons in America. Do you understand that? We can no longer allow these people to do so. So that's why I'm saying even if you have as little as a few people on a damn social media site that is in your sphere of influence, I am in I'm calling on you to go out and start posting news articles that basically call out the hypocrisy of the lamestream mainstream media. All right? Expose the lies that the damn talking heads are saying. Expose the demons of Hillary Rotten Clinton. Expose this stuff because these morons literally get their news from these morons that are on the lamestream mainstream media that are lying to them. That are lying to them. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, uh, before we get into uh, more on Omar Mateen and his family and his radical ties, I want to go ahead and take some calls here because uh, I, I want to be able to be interactive with the show. Uh, I've been getting a lot of tweets saying that, hey, I like how you take callers. I'm trying to call in. Uh, and, you know, it's very hard to call in because, uh, you know, the lines are always booked. The number, of course, if you want to call, 
888-900-9903 is the number to call here. Uh, I want to hear your opinion, first of all, on what I have been saying thus far, even since yesterday. Yesterday's show was, okay, liberals, you want Sharia law or do you want to be pro-LGBTQ? And today, Donald Trump basically said that in a nutshell in today's speech. That's why I'm imploring you to watch it. It almost sounds as if he listens to the show. I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not kidding around, baby. I'm not joking around. All right, I'm serious. I want to take some calls here, and I want to hear from you. All right? And if you don't have nothing serious to say, I'm just going to click you off like some, uh, you know, red-headed, four-eyed, freckle-faced, beaten stepchild moron. All right? And that's all there is to it. So let, let's get to some calls here. Do we have any calls, engineer? <laughs> well, we got a few calls here, according to the engineer, so let's go ahead and get to them right now. Uh, how about uh, 570? You're on the horn. What's going on? Hey, hey, Ghost. You know all heroes don't wear capes. I love you, Omar Mateen. You're my hero. Yada la. La, 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 la. Uh, you think that's funny, man? Do you want you want people to call you? Want some people in the Muslim community to call you? Maybe they'll recruit you or something? There, he, Omar Mateen's my hero. Okay, uh, 570 Hey, I know. Hey, here, somebody give him a call and help him out, please. Five seven zero six one four eight two one nine. I mean, give me a break. I'm telling you. I mean, what? What the? I mean, first of all, if you're going to do a troll, I mean, do something funny. I mean, that, that just once again, this just underscores why we are in the current position that we're in. This sounded like some, you know, with all due respect, eighteen year old, maybe seventeen year old little twat. All right, probably has a single mother. I'm willing to put money on it. And the reason that this idiot uh, thinks that this is funny, first of all, is because he's probably seen how devious and disgusting his mother is with men, first, of, first, first and foremost. And secondly, uh, doesn't know how to communicate properly because, oh, do, does mom know how to communicate nowadays? I think not. I guess all she has to do is, you know, you know shake some... Uh, uh, shake some money tits and, uh, you know, uh, show her meat wallet off, and then all of a sudden uh, that's why she's got her man in the bed for her for this weekend. Isn't that right there? I mean, this is a consequence of that. I'm sorry. I blame you single mothers uh, for idiots that just, like this idiot that just called. I blame you single mothers for this. I'm sorry. All right? And, and, look, I'm not trying to say that every single mother is bad. I mean, I know that some single mothers actually had a decent husband. They either died or, you know, they, they, or they were just legitimate pieces of crap. Okay, I get it. But for the most part, let's be honest, all right, most of these women are getting into freaking marriage and having children uh, just for the, sta- for the sake of aesthetics. You know, having children uh, for the sake of... Uh, an accessory, having a fashion accessory. And you see, this is the consequence of that. Some unoriginal, stupid, imbecilic garbage that thinks that this is funny. I mean, you know, he could have said something a little bit more funnier, original, but he can't because single mom didn't teach him how to communicate. And uh, this is the consequence. Thanks, single mothers. I really appreciate what you've done to the country, you piece of crap. I'm serious. I really, you know what, you make me sick. You know, that single, I mean, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, because look, I'm sick and tired of these little twerps that are coming around the pike. This is the future of America out here, for Christ's sake. I mean, look at what you've done to the millennials, all right? They're a bunch of lazy pricks that think that everything should be handed to them on a silver platter, for Christ's sake, all right? Free college, free education, free jobs, and when I mean free jobs... Uh, they want to freaking get paid 15 bucks an hour uh, to bag groceries, for Christ's sake. They want 15 bucks an hour to push buttons on a goddamn cash register. I mean, it's just ridiculous, all right? And this is the direct consequence of the pussy pampering, for a lack of a better term, of these past generations, and they make me sick. They make me utterly sick. And now the new ones that are coming around the pike are even more fruity ass, are even more fruit bowl, for Christ's sake, because look at them, all right, look at them, the absolute, utter, sick, disgusting pussification, the absolute pussification of the American goddamn male has been implemented 
thanks to these goddamn single mothers. You understand that? And it makes me sick to my stomach that I gotta sit here and I gotta pallet this crap. I gotta pallet this crap. I gotta sit here. I gotta look at these little twerps. I'm from Austin, Texas, okay? I look at these dumb idiots all the damn time. All right, they're getting fruitier and fruitier. All right. I mean, you should see the modern male today. Have you? I mean, they. they Jesus Christ. I've been saying this for years, man. I've been saying this for years. You know that the modern-day American male nowadays wears these blue jean leggings now. Blue jean leggings is what they're wearing, for Christ's sake, where you can see anal camel toe. Anal camel toe. I mean, good. <laughs> oh, jeez. God damn it. I mean, look, do you understand how complicated sociality is getting nowadays, folks? Do you understand that? Oh, my God. Oh, good God. Uh, Yeah, give me that mic. Give me that mic. Give me that mic. Give me that mic. I mean, do you understand this? I'm, I'm serious. Do you understand this? I'm going to try to I'm going to try to take one more call here, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to make the show a little bit more interactive and this is what we got out here, huh? The utter pussification of the American male. I, I just can't believe it, man. I can't believe it. And you notice that none of these males anymore, they don't have deep voices. They don't get deep voices anymore. I don't I don't get it. What's going on here? Why don't males have deep voices anymore? Can somebody explain that to me? I mean, the more and more I call on these damn numbers, all I hear is, uh, hi, ghost, uh, uh, my name is, uh, I mean, I'm serious, man. I mean, what? Oh. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You know what it is? I'm telling you. It is the attack of the zombie cooch. The attack of the zombie cooch. And what's the zombie cooch? The damn single mother, all right, because I'm telling you, that's what they're doing. What's coming out of their coochies are zombies that like Gucci's. Uh, Jesus Christ, damn it. Jesus Christ, I mean, this is America. This is Obama's America. This is Hillary Clinton's America. How do you like it, huh? How do you take a good whiff? Smell it, boy. Smell it. Smell it! It smells like a damn dirty, used up freaking urinal. Hi, I'm rapper actor model Lil Dicky, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about a pretty glaring issue within our society, and that's condom usage. Guys, I think we've gotten pretty laissez-faire about wearing condoms, and to be honest, I find it disgusting. People are having unprotected sex without even batting an eye. It's insane. It doesn't make one shred of sense to me. How can you even enjoy it? I'd be so stressed out the whole time. I won't bore you guys with the stats, but just know that STDs and unintended pregnancies are very real, and there's nothing better than peace of mind, and that's what a Trojan can provide you, the pleasure of protection. So be an adult and put a condom on. Christ, man. I'm, look, I'm sorry for going off key. Give me the mic. Give me, give me that mic. Give me that damn mic. Look, folks, I, I'm sorry for going off keister here, but look, this is what the, the future ha- holds right here. This is why these bureaucrats are able to take control out here. This is how come they're able to bring in the damn terrorists from these battle-hardened areas of the damn Middle East, bring these wild jihadist jihudis into the country so that they can cause the terrorism so that Obama and the liberals can implement their totalitarian crap. It's idiots like this. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. How about 775? You're on the horn. You got something to say? Yeah, ghost. Yeah, um... I just had to say something about this fucking shooter, man. Um, you know, it, it, it's really kind of ironic how the liberal left will pander to, you know, the whole gun control thing when in actuality this is a fucking migrant thing. This asshole, he comes up fucking shoots a whole bunch of gays. Oh, look at the gay community. And they're going to, who's going to defend them? The fucking liberals? Bullshit, man. 
I, I'm sorry. I, I get pissed off about this crap, but, you know, Ghost, I love your show. I love what you have to say, and uh, could you keep me on? I'm still listening. All right, no problem. Hey, look, they're coming after the gun control, folks, because that's what they did in Europe. This is a model that is being implemented in America that has been already done in Europe. Do you understand this? Please look up Europe and the EU and the migrant crisis. Just go, just YouTube search this, European migrant crisis, and take a look at what the problems are happening out there. I mean, it is not a joke. I mean, I don't understand how hard it is for you numbnut idiot liberals to comprehend this in your stupid pea brains, for Christ's sake, man. It's the attack of the zombie cooch. Oh, my God. Anyway, let's let's take a couple more calls, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Omar Mateen over here. Well, I can't believe this. I can't believe you people, to be honest with you. I, I seriously can't believe you people. Anyway, how about 907? What do you got to say? Hey, Ghost. I really love your show, but I really don't have anything important to say. You mind keeping me on the show still? No, okay. Well, put put your hand up. Push the number one, and, uh, you know, I don't want to call on you and you have your hand up for Christ's sake. You don't have anything important to say. Here's a bunch of things important to say. How about 971? What's up? Hey, Ghost. How's it going? How you doing, man? Hey, doing pretty good. Um, well, as for this topic, uh, of course, I, I don't understand why LGBT, they think they can live in both worlds, you know? Um, I think it's kind of pathetic. And uh, I have some more things to talk about. Later, so could you please keep me on? I actually want to talk to the Teutonic Plague later, if possible. Uh, okay, well, 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 let's keep that stuff to the third hour, all right? All right, we'll keep that stuff to the third hour. How about 504? What do you have to say about this subject? Hey, what's going on, Ghost? Uh, How you hey, doing, man? Dude. I'm doing good. Hey, uh, something to cheer you up. I seen a video the other day. Hillary Clinton is walking up the steps to uh, get into her plane. She stops at the top, turns around, waves, walks into the plane, and falls and eats. It. And oh my god, it is fucking hilarious. I think you need to go watch it. Really? When did this happen? Do you know the uh, exact date? No, I, I seen it yesterday, so I, I assume it was yesterday. I mean, it, you had to look it up and watch it. You'll probably take a big enjoyment out of it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, letting us know about that. If anybody out there has seen this clip of Hillary Clinton going into the plane and uh, uh, you know, basically eating it, falling. I- I'd like for you guys uh, to find that for me, and I'll retweet it, whoever uh, whoever tweets it at me. Uh, but first and foremost, I don't even think that this woman is even healthy enough to be running for president. There is a bunch of evidence that is clearly showing that this woman is suffering from some ailments. And not to mention, have you seen Bill Clinton lately, for Christ's sake? I mean, doesn't this man, and this is my opinion, this is my opinion, doesn't this man look like he's got the AIDS? I'm just saying. I'm sorry. I, doesn't it look like he's a little sick? I'm sorry. He, he looks like his immune system is a little compromised, to say the least. He's going off keister. He looks like he's a space cadet. He's in la-la land. Uh, I, and look, the rumor mill is is that they know, the uh, Clinton campaign knows that there is something wrong with Bill Clinton. There is an ailment with Bill Clinton that they are waiting to politicize at the necessary time. So just keep your minds open to whatever they announce that Bill Clinton has, because uh, this is the rumor mill in the Democratic circles. And once again, folks, I'm in Austin, Texas. A lot of Democrats, big-time Democrats live out here. Paul Begala, uh, we, we always got Carl Rove, believe it or not, he lives out here. But uh, a lot of, a lot of de- uh, uh, a lot, a lot of different people that live out here, and uh, you know these people are mainstream, hardcore Democrats. The reason they moved out here is because they are trying to turn Texas quote blue, a blue state. That they, they, they ain't no chance in hell. I'll tell you this: they have sure as hell did a good job here in Austin, Texas. That's why I'm considering to get the hell out of here. Or I'm serious. I'm considering to get the hell out of here for Christ's sake. I want to get the hell out of Austin, Texas. It makes me sick. And somebody uh, retweeted it to me. There's actually a lot of people. Thank you very much for all the folks that took the time to do so. There it is. I mean, there's her. There, there's uh, all, uh, video clips of Hillary Clinton coughing. I mean, many different coughing fits. 
Uh, there's a picture that she took for some magazine cover, and it actually looks like she's holding a walker. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm just telling you, I don't think that this woman is healthy enough to run for president, and yet you won't see the liberals talking about that, right, boy? Anyway, I want to go into a little bit of this Omar Mateen. You know, this Omar Mateen, folks, uh, this uh, this idiot, all right, I mean, the more and more information that comes out about this terrorist, the more and more freaked out uh, everyone should be at this point in time, all right? Not only was this man licensed to carry guns, folks, uh, according to Breitbart News, and I like to give credit to people that break these types of stories, uh, Breitbart.com, uh, they found evidence that this man worked for a contractor, a major contractor for Homeland Security. Oh, oh, I mean, come on, for Christ's sake. Are you kidding me? You have got to be kidding me. So, I mean, how does that make you feel? How safe does that make you feel, folks? This... Omar Matif, the man that went into the Pulse nightclub and literally killed 50 people, wounded over 50, this man, all right, worked, and remember, it initially came out that he worked as a security guard. No, now it is found out that this man's company is a subcontractor, or excuse me, a major contractor, not a subcontractor, major contractor for Homeland Security. I mean, doesn't this stink to high hell? Doesn't this stink to high hell? And look, not only has it been reported, but even Donald Trump used it in his speech that this man had been visited by the FBI twice, all right? And nothing was done, okay? Nothing was done. And, uh, I, you know, of course, i got to give credit where credit's due. Infowars.com broke the story that uh, Hillary Clinton and her State Department played a major factor in closing the investigation that could have potentially led uh, to the prevention of this particular tragedy. They were investigating the mosque at which Omar Mateen was worshiping at. And let me tell you, when you start thinking about why these people are pulling off these wild Jehudi suicidal uh, terrorist acts, you've got to go directly to the mosques. Because these are the people that are feeding them with this spiritual malarkey that is hypnotizing them into believing that they are going to be martyrs if they kill themselves in the name of Allah. All right, if they do an Allah snack bar and kill themselves, somebody has got to be motivating them to do it, and it's those people at that mosque. And that mosque was under investigation, was under surveillance, but... According to Infowars.com, and you can look it up for yourself, folks, they broke the story. The State Department, Hillary Rotten Clinton State Department, prevented the actual investigation to continue because, quote, it may offend Muslims. Oh, political correctness here, isn't that right? Oh, isn't that great? Oh, that's just great, for Christ's sake. I mean, do you see what's going on here, folks? Huh? Do you, I mean, do you see what's going on here? Oh, God, I just, it just makes me sick. How can you people that are on the left continue to back this crap up, man? How can you sleep at night? Seriously, how do you sleep at night? And not to mention, folks, Omar Mateen's uh, father. All right, was it Sadiq Mateen? Is that his name? Yeah, Sadiq Mateen, or whatever the hell his stupid name is. Do you know that this idiot was a pro-Taliban, uh, I, I don't know, some kind of uh, pro-Taliban revolutionary living in diaspora, all right? Sadiq Mateen, he ran a show called the Duran Jirga. The Duran Jirga, that believe it or not, folks, not only did he have a uh, YouTube channel, which I have tweeted, folks, tweeted that about nine hours ago, but this particular channel that's on YouTube, he actually bought time, airtime, to be broadcast in the region of Pakistan via some uh, television station out there in Orlando, Florida. I'm not joking! Uh, Sadiq Mateen, all right? 
Sadiq Mateen, I think you need to start looking and seeing that this idiot was a militant. He was a militant, and he was broadcasting in the region of Pakistan and Afghanistan, in the Pashtun region. And, of course, the Pashtun tribe, folks, were uh, the original tribe that created the damn Taliban. All right? I mean, where do you think the Taliban got their spiritual instruction from? Pakistan. That's why that particular region of Pakistan and Afghanistan, the Pashtun region, is uh, is being disputed. And this uh, uh, this Sadiq Mateen, this guy is actually uh, having broadcast. He's buying satellite time to broadcast in that region, man. And not to mention, he claimed that he was running for Afghan president. I mean, this guy is, he believes he's a part of the Taliban. I mean, why wasn't this man's father under investigation? I mean, all this stinks to high hell. And what it seems to me, in my personal opinion, is that this administration purposely stalled this investigation into this person, and probably countless others. This is probably not just this one. This administration is probably halting the FBI and everybody else from investigating these types of legitimate threats to national security because of quote-unquote political correctness. And in my personal opinion, folks, I think they're doing it on purpose. I think that this administration is utilizing political correctness as a warfare tactic against the people. Because if they utilize this idea of politically correctness, and and believe me, how can they do it, right? You're asking, well, how can they do it? They're utilizing the legal system against America. They will threaten prosecution of those that are within the FBI that they can deem were offending Muslims or racially profiling Muslims. Folks, this is an absolute documented fact. This is what is happening here in America, folks. This administration, Obama, Eric Holder is implicated on this, the new DOJ, Hillary Rotten Clinton, every one of these people are utilizing political correctness as a warfare tactic against the American people. That's why they're bringing in the problem. They're bringing in the wild Jehudis from Syria so that they can be, uh, you know, ticking time bombs, all right, closet sleeper cells, that once they go off, these damn bureaucrats, these totalitarians in disguise can implement their totalitarianism upon us, upon America, suspend elections. If you don't think it'll happen, folks, they are doing it in Europe. They're doing it in Europe. Wake up, for Christ's sake, man. Wake up. All right, let me take a couple of more callers here, and then we'll get to some uh, Twitter shout-outs. And once again, folks, this Omar Mateen, the more and more information that comes out about this guy, it's just getting disgusting, all right? FBI had him under surveillance, talked to him twice, uh, basically had their investigations foiled by Hillary Rotten Clinton's State Department. This is out of Infowars.com. I mean, Jesus Christ. All because of political correctness. I'm telling you this right now. This democratic liberal regime is utilizing political correctness as a tool, as a warfare tactic against the American people. And if you don't believe me, give me a break. And let me tell you, before I take another call, I implore you once again to please listen. Even if you hate Donald Trump, even if you hate him, listen to today's speech. Listen to today's speech. And, folks, he says... A really, really interesting word. He said, this may be a Trojan horse. And when he talks about Trojan horse, he is speaking about Obama. He's speaking about this administration. He's speaking about the democratic liberal regime that's been in power today for eight damn years. That's who he's talking about when he's discussing this, quote, Trojan horse. And I think that everybody needs to think about that for a second. All right? Put your pecker shaft down and think about that just for a little bit. This damn administration may be the Trojan horse that destroys this country, you dumb sacks of crap. And you people voted him in twice. Jesus Christ. Well, it just makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach that you people are shameless and you could care less. You think that, oh, no, yes, we can. And meh, meh, meh. 
disgrace. You should be all, you should be ashamed of yourselves. If you voted for Barack Obama, you should be a goddamn shame to yourself. You understand that, boy? You're the one that helped cause the problem that we have here today. You did it, boy. You did it. Anyway, let's let's take some callers here. How about eight five six, man? What's going on? Oh, wait a minute, that's Trump and Capitalist. How you doing, man? Good afternoon, Ghost. This is the Trump and Capitalist. How are you this fine afternoon? Well, not too bad. Uh, what I don't like is uh, the way the lamestream mainstream media is trying to slant this particular Islamic terrorist act. Uh, but do you got any four one one for us about this or anything pertaining to this? Yes, I do. And uh, actually, you took some of the. Uh, Took some of the main points out of my blog post. I don't know if you read it or not, but you exactly like said what I wrote. So first and foremost, what I wanted to talk about is the background of the perpetrator. This is a first part of a ongoing series of the blog, the Orlando Conspiracy. And first and foremost, I wanted to cover his uh, Democratic affiliation. So as you know, yesterday I, I think I saw you retweet something about this. He, Omar Mateen, was re- registered as a Democrat since 2006. And he actually voted twice in the 2008 and 2012 election uh, on the absentee ballot uh, for looks like for Obama. And also, it should be noted that the city of Orlando's mayor was also one of these uh, mayors against illegal gun coalition members. So basically, he was toughening the gun laws in Orlando, and crime was just skyrocketed. Uh, it was about 7,261 out per 1,000 people in Orlando, the crime rate. So you know, before you get on to anything else, you mean to tell me that the terrorist that committed the, this tragedy in Orlando voted for Obama twice to absentee ballot? Is that what you said? That's what I saw uh, somewhere on an article. I don't remember what article it was, but there was an article that said he voted on the absentee ballot. Oh, man. How, how quaint. But go ahead. All right. Now I want to move on to the uh, FBI investigations. Uh, it actually right. wasn't twice, but actually it was three times, once in 2013, once in 2014, and once last year. Uh, the one in 2015 was actually, if I can find the link here, here we go. Uh, the FBI investigated Omar Mateen's connection to Abu Salah, which is in the Middle East, and returned. Uh, he went to the Middle East to meet with Abu Salah, was trained, and then returned to the Treasure Coast, specifically Fort Pierce to recruit. So the FBI said he did recruit anyone, but it's possible he did have contact with some of these Abu Salah members. Interesting, very interesting. And, you know, I did read that this young man also uh, went to Saudi Arabia a couple of times. Is that the Middle Eastern trips you're talking about, or these different Middle Eastern trips? Uh, I think these are related because he actually did go, like, 2013, 2014, and also in 2015, I I believe he went to. He went, it says he went to the Middle East. It doesn't specifically say which countries, but I'm thinking it's somewhere like Saudi Arabia, uh, Syria, Iraq, maybe somewhere along the lines of. Maybe I read a uh, I read a CNBC report in which uh, it states in 2011, 2012, he took trips to Saudi Arabia. Uh, you're stating these are uh, trips that he took post those years. Yes, look what, from what it looks like, 2015. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, it's just getting it's getting really, really ridiculous out here, man. Uh, anything else there, uh, Trump and capitalist? One more thing, and then that's the end of this. Uh, his employment. Uh, the company you were talking about is G4S. It's a security firm. Basically, it says G4S is a leading global integrated security company specializing in the provision of security products, services, and solutions. Group is active in more than 110 countries. So basically, here's the scoop. This company has been... Uh, cooperating with the DHS, as you mentioned, but has also been cooperating with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And this, com- and this uh, company, G4S, has a contract out that's worth $250 million uh, to basically uh, transport illegal immigrants to many cities along the southwestern borders, such as uh, uh, tech- in states as Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California. You name it. Anywhere along the south, uh, southwestern border, they, the uh, G4S is transporting these uh, illegal immigrants to these states. All right. So let me uh, let me just uh, reemphasize what you just said. You're saying that the uh, the security company. What was the security company name again? Uh, G4S. 
G4S that employed the terrorist that uh, did this Orlando shooting. Uh, his company is in charge of transporting immigrants from wherever their origin of uh, country into the southwest region. I mean, they have a government contract to do that that's worth $250 million. Is that what you just uh, said to me? Did, did, is that a fair assessment of what you just said? Yeah, I actually have one of the pictures right here from one of the states. Uh, G4S supports the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Customs and Border Protection with its operations at the U.S.-Mexico border and with U.S. Immigration and custom enforcements to transport illegal immigrants into select urban areas, such as, you know, like cities in Texas, cities in New Mexico, cities in uh, Arizona, cities in California, all over the place. Unreal, unreal. And this was a uh, this was one of their employees that conducted themselves in Islamic terror. I mean, that's what I keep telling the American people. How safe do you feel if this I- idiot that went ape, well, I shouldn't curse, but uh, that, that went uh, a la snack bar, for a lack of a better term, out here at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, was a uh, was employed by a major contractor of Homeland Security, and that major contractor, G4S, you said at the name of the company? That is correct. G4S has got a $250 million contract with the United States government to bring in illegal immigrants into America through the Southwest and retransplant them into suburban areas. I mean, this is a definite unraveling of things. Is this on your blog? This is on my blog. And this also raises the question, you know, did this guy actually help sneak in other ISIS terrorists or other ISIS-related, you know, suicide bombers, gunmen? I mean, it, it, I, it raises the question, did this guy help smuggle in ISIS terrorists without being detected? That's a big question. That's a very big question. I mean, maybe that's another reason why this president won't use the term Islamic terrorism, even though all evidence points towards it, because uh, maybe there is an investigation, and that's why you had the, uh, what was it, the, the U.S. attorney out there in Orlando suggesting that if there are any other suspects at large to turn themselves in, I think that's what he suggested? Yeah, I think that's what he suggested, too. So, I mean, I'm telling you, that is a very good point that you bring up, Trump, Trump and capitalists, that uh, if this uh, Omar Mateen was working for this G4S, a homeland security contractor that brings in immigrants into the southwest region, was this uh, Omar Mateen involved in smuggling in people from ISIS, uh, bringing them into suburban areas, and are just waiting for orders to attack. I think that's very, very interesting, and I think people need to think about that for a second. Uh, you want to go ahead and plug your blog, man, so uh, we can go out and get to uh, Twitter shout-outs? All right, let's get into Twitter shout-outs. Let me just give my blog, uh, pl- uh, plug it to the blog. It is at thegodofrage.wordpress.com. My Twitter is the God of Rage, capital T, capital R. If you want to send me any questions, any comments, or if you want to argue against me, and that's great. Just tweet at me or send me a comment on my blog post. Please go visit it and spread the information. Go have a wonderful day, and God bless the capitalist army. Hey, thank you very much, Trump and Capitalist. Once again, Trump and Capitalist, independent investigative journalist. Uh, we are the new media, folks. You, me, we're the new media. We're the ones that got to find out the information, and once we find it out, we got to spread it around like wildfire because the talking heads on the lamestream mainstream media are not going to tell us and I'm very proud of Trump and capitalist because uh, he's a member of the capitalist army. Uh, he listened to yours truly, got a blog, and took his own initiative, took his own creativity, his own ambition, and went out and made himself his own investigative journalist. All right, I mean, I'm serious. I'm, I'm proud of this, and that's why I am encouraging each and every one of you within the sound of my voice to utilize the uh, means of communication to do the same damn thing, all right? I mean, it is that easy. If you want to be an investigative journalist, if you want to expose corruption, if you want to give your opinion based on fact, if you want to shape the conscience of people, well, by God, you have the means of communication right at your fingertips. That's why I'm imploring you to go out and get a blog, go to the forum posts, uh, get a social media account, and go out and continue to communicate these ideas, uh, news posts, uh, I, I mean, I'm just 
Expose hypocrisy. Expose lies. It's that important. Donald Trump's election is that damn important. And once again, I want to say props to Trump and capitalists and any other member of the capitalist army that has conducted themselves in this same capacity. Anyway, folks, we are in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Uh, If you want a Twitter shout-out here, go ahead and retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. And the Twitter name to uh, follow, folks, is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Retweet the first tweet that states, True Capitalist Radio Now Live. It's that damn simple, baby. True Capitalist Radio Now Live. Anyway, do we got any Twitter shout-outs, Engineer? All right, well, let's get to some Twitter shout-outs right now. All right, who we got here? We got uh, Sergeant Briggs in the place. What's going on, Yoda? Uh, we've got uh, we got Christopher Smith in the house. What's going on, man? Uh, we got Frog Milo. Uh, we've got uh, Bird Shit. Uh, excuse my French. That's the name. Uh, that's the name that's on the uh, <laughs> the Twitter name. Uh, we've got uh, what's going on? In the Teutonic Plague. Regular TCA in the place. What's going on? Uh, we've got the Green Leader in the house. Uh, we've got, uh, Adamite Zero, okay, uh, let's continue going, we got Viper 2 Actual in the house, uh, Liquid Swartz, what's going on to Liquid Swartz, uh, we've got Hector Fahrenheit, uh, Anders in the place, what's going on to Anders, uh, James Hagesdale, uh, Pooh Head Ghost, yeah, whatever, you piece of crap, uh, we've got, uh, Fruity Shooty, Ghost Chi Min, Lux, let's not, you know, let's not do that, all right? Let's not go there, all right, boy? We've got the Dr. Hobbit in the house, uh, bowling with Brucey. What the hell's up with this bowling crap? Can somebody explain what the hell bowling with? What, what the hell is that crap? Hi, I'm rapper, actor, model Lil Dicky, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about a pretty glaring issue within our society, and that's condom usage. Guys, I think we've gotten pretty laissez-faire about wearing condoms, and to be honest, I find it disgusting. People are having unprotected sex without even batting an eye. It's insane. It doesn't make one shred of sense to me. How can you even enjoy it? I'd be so stressed out the whole time. I won't bore you guys with the stats, but just know that STDs and unintended pregnancies are very real, and there's nothing better than peace of mind, and that's what a Trojan can provide you, the pleasure of protection. So be an adult and put a condom on. There's the trans can with a damn can with a pair of balls on it, for Christ's sake. Sick crap. Anyway, once again, folks, if you want a Twitter shout-out, go ahead and give me a retweet uh, on my Twitter account. The retweet uh, you need to tweet is uh, True Capitalist Radio Now Live, baby. All right, let's continue going, shall we? Uh, we've got TF2 Capitalist, Capitalist UK, Portugal for Ghost, Bureaucrat Cripple, oh, Jesus Christ, uh, zero pulses for Florida. Look, no, 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 let's not go there, right? It's still a little too soon, trolls. It's still a little too t- soon, so don't, don't even try it. Don't even go there. Anyway, we've got Atron Havoc in the house. What's going on to Free Zorg? Uh, we've got Capitalizing on Wheels, huh? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I am not a cripple, ass clowns. Jesus Christ, we got firm bacon tits. That's fresh. Uh, we've got uh, shots are on me in Orlando. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, I, I try, I try, and I try. You know, I try to make this show interactive. You know, I try to give people the opportunity to come out and, you know, try to be interactive with the show. But you see, this is the goddamn internet right here, folks. You see, this is what you get out here. You see, this is why, uh, you know, for you folks that want to, oh, I want some internet fame. <laughs> this is it right here. You see that, boy? You see this? That's, yeah, Jesus Christ, that's just great. Give me a break. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Oh, do you see this? Yeah, anyway, we got Big C in the house. Oh, my God. The Commando in Orlando. 
I mean, man, do you all have a soul? Do you trolls even have a soul? Oh, my God. Anyway, we've got Dirk Pitt in the house. Uh, we got Corn Blaster in the house. Uh, we, we've got, we got, uh, I'm not saying that disgusting name for Christ's sake. Anyway, let's continue going, shall we? If you want to uh, shout out, retweet the first tweet, man, on my Twitter account. Uh, we've got Vet of Forum Wars. Uh, LGBT for Islam? No way that's real. No, no way that's a goddamn real account. No way. No way that's a real account. That's got to be a troll here. Anyway, we got Base Loller in the place. Uh, positivity for Orlando. Oh, man, I know where you're going with that, assholes. All right, I, I know what you're doing there. I know what you're doing, trolls. Jesus Christ, man. I mean, is this what inspires you to be creative? Seriously? I mean, there's something wrong with you people. I'm not joking. I mean, if this is what's inspiring you out here to be creative. I'm, I'm only going to do a, l a little. I I'm just going to do a little more. I'm, I'm just going to do a couple of more, all right? Jesus Christ. Anyway, we've got uh, Czech Capitalist in the house, Lego Fan 421 in the place. What's going on to Sergeant Stryker in the place? What's going on to him? Uh, we've got the Green Bio, Choco Latte. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not saying that disgusting name for Christ's sake. Uh, let me see what we got here. We got, I'm not, y'all are sick, man. Orlando Hole Puncher. All right, that's enough. That, that's it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's it. I'm telling you, you trolls. Y'all, yeah, you see, this is why the world can't have nice things, huh? This is why right here. This is why right here. This is why the goddamn world can't have nice things, man. Oh, my God. Good God. Jesus Christ, give me the mic. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I mean, you know, that just, that just makes me jaded. I'm telling you this right now. I mean, the heartlessness, you know what I'm saying? It just gets me jaded, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, I was all hyped to do this show, but then you got these damn troll terrorists and cyber vermin out here that got to go and mess it up for everybody. Anyway, folks, if you haven't already done so, folks, please bookmark the official website. Jesus Christ, with these sick trolls. The official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. Uh, it's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, folks. All right. Uh, let's take a couple of callers here. All right. We were talking about Omar Mateen, his family, his father. Uh, you know, the whole nine yards, for Christ's sake. I want to talk to you, all right? And let me tell you what Clinton said before uh, we take some calls. Uh, Clinton says that the people that are upset about this Orlando tragedy, this Islamic terrorist act, you need to turn that fury into resolve. Oh, 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 really? Huh? Uh, is that because your uh, State Department blocked the investigation into the Orlando Killers mosques, you stupid leftist piece of soulless trash? Is that it? Is that it, Hillary Rotten? Is that it, you scumbag? You soulless liberal scumbags! You know, before I take calls, folks, I know there's a lot of liberals and a lot of atheists and a lot of people that listen to me, for Christ's sake, you know, I, I know they probably need some inspiration. I need some inspiration. So uh, since they are not spiritual, let's turn to one of their secular gods that these people think is the uh, authority of all authority as it relates to the galaxy and the universe and uh, black holes and quasars and stars and supernovas and all this other crap. And I'm talking about none other than Stephen Hawking, and, folks, I know people think that this is some kind of a troll or something. Folks, 
This is actually Stephen Hawking's voice with his translator before they forced the voice box on him and he never talked again, all right? This is Stephen Hawking with his translator. Let's see if we can get inspired. Hey, engineer, do you got that clip? All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and play it for Christ's sake, because I'm I'm not joking. I mean, we need some inspiration. I'm sure that the uh, the, the secularist and the damn atheists out there need some inspiration. Let's, so let's get some goddamn inspiration. Go ahead, engineer. God damn it. There's a space outside here. There's a space outside here. Oh, jeez. He makes it fairly obvious that that's what Stephen's portrait if he needs. Well, that's great, isn't it? That's a shut him up! Shut him up! Very inspiring words from Stephen Hawking, huh? Now, you see that statement right there, I mean, from Hawking? And let me paraphrase what he said. He said, <laughs> and his translator said, uh, there's a space outside there. There's a space outside here. I mean, this is what the damn atheists, this is what the liberals, this is what these people look up to as their secular gods, for Christ's sake. No wonder they can be manipulated. I mean, good God. Give me a freaking break. Hey, let me tell you, that is really Stephen Hawking's voice. I swear, I, I know people think that I'm lying. Look it up for yourself, all right? Stephen Hawking's real voice. One more time, engineer, since people have, uh, love his voice. They seem to love it. They're getting inspired, for Christ's sake. There's a space outside here. He makes it fairly obvious that that's what Stephen's portrait if he needs. Such an inspiring speech from Stephen Hawking. Oh, yeah. Are you inspired? Are you inspired? I'm in, inspired by Stephen Hawking. He is my secular god. Give me a goddamn break. Shut up! Anyway, folks, uh, let's go back to the calls here, right? 516-453-9903 is the number to call here. We're discussing, unfortunately, we have to discuss the issues and it's going to have to be this Orlando shooting, Omar Mateen, uh, uh, whether or not the liberals want Sharia law or they want to be pro-LGBTQ. And we've got to force the narrative on the liberals and not let them try to spin it and cause them to try to take away our Second Amendment constitutionally protected right. We can't let them do it, boy. We cannot, we cannot do it. Anyway, let's take some calls here, folks. Uh, and, of course, if you can't get through, keep trying, folks, all right? I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, try to, uh, you know, make some room for the folks that are trying to get through here uh, to the True Capitalist Radio Show. 516-453-9903 is the number to call here. Let's go ahead and uh, take some calls. How about uh, 609? You're on the horn. What's going on? Hey, Ghost, it's uh, Baxi right here from the other day. I called in, and I was complaining about the reaction from the Islamic community. All right. Um, and, well, I sent you that a uh, video of uh, – he's a Breitbart reporter named Milo Yanapopoulos, who also happens to be a member of the LBGT community, that actually named statistics on how many Muslims actually hate homosexuals which is rather shocking. It's about like 51% of all British Muslims that were born in Britain think that they should criminalize homo homosexuality. And, of course, you know, after everything yesterday, when I got off the phone from you, I watched the news again, and, of course, CARE, which is the 
Islamic Council of American Relations came on and they did exactly what I said they would do, which was, oh, that wasn't us. We're actually good Muslims and we stand with you. And But again, they didn't actually offer any reform. Well, no, not only are they offering any reform, not I mean, they are not denouncing Islamic terror. And like Donald Trump said in his speech today, once again, I am imploring you to please watch the speech he made today. It is a historic speech, all right? Uh, he stated that uh, the Muslim community is going to have to start helping and busting these people, uh, telling who these damn terrorists are if they, quote, don't want to be lumped in with this Islamic terrorism. Because right now, as we see it, the Islamic community is not helping in trying to prevent terrorist actions. And by that action, by not doing anything, proves one of two things. Either they're wanting not to have it to be their problem, or they actually want it to happen. And in my personal opinion, I think most of them actually want it to happen. And I'm very familiar with Milo Yiannopoulos. I know for a fact that the majority, if not 85-plus percent of the Muslim community, wants to not only criminalize Muslims, but they want to kill them. It's in their religion. Now, you know, the funny part about it is, is that in their religion, it's perfectly okay to, you know, molest uh, young boys. I, I'm not joking around. I'm not kidding around. I know it's unfortunately hate speech in Europe to say something like that, but let me tell you, we still have free speech in America, and I'm still going to say it. It's okay in the Islamic religion to molest, uh, you know, young girls, young boys, but, you know, no, no, no. If you happen to be a man, you've got to be thrown off a building, right? I mean, the hypocrisy. I mean, this is spiritual hypocrisy, and they are brainwashing billion, over a billion people with this nonsense, all right? I mean, this is a serious threat of not only national security, but obviously by what's happening in Europe, it is a threat to world security. When are all you people going to wake up and realize that? When we're finally in civil unrest like the European Union is on the brink of right now? Because the Eurocrats caused the problem by bringing in the migrant situation, by bringing in the terrorism? When are y'all going to learn? Good Lord. Anyway, thank you for calling in, man. I really appreciate it. Let's take a couple of more callers here. 425, you're on the horn. What's up? Yeah. It's not radio graffiti, ass clown. Uh, let's take another caller here. How about uh, 614? You're on the horn. Hey, is this me? Yeah, how you doing? Good, how about you guys? Not too bad. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, the 5 for 15 and something like that. Can I talk to you about that in the third hour? Talk about what again, man? The 5 for 15. The fight for 15? Yeah. $15. Why are you are you are you pro are you pro fifteen dollar an hour? No, I'm against it, and uh, I think a lot of millennials are stupid, and I just wanted to bitch about that. All right, well, I'll leave you on for the third hour, man. I'll make sure to keep you on the hold. No problem, man. Uh, let's say uh, how about uh, we got the Teutonic plague in the house since uh, everybody loves the Teutonic plague, and he seems to be uh, everybody's favorite. Uh, uh, you know, troll to, I don't know what it is, but hey, Teutonic Plague, you there? Hey, what's going on, Ghost? I am that squeaker, the man they call the Teutonic Plague, and I have to go slightly off kilter. I'm sorry to have to do this, but it kind of has something to do with uh, the Orlando shooting, kind of. Let's see if I can find it here. Ha! Here it is. Guess who followed me yesterday, Ghost? Who's that? Masked pony. Oh well, uh, I, you know I don't want to. I don't want to talk about that right now. There, uh, Teutonic plague. I mean, you know, let's wait for that for the third hour. All right. I mean, we're we're, we're sitting here. We're trying to talk about a serious situation. So we'll we'll come back to you, and you know, uh, we'll we'll talk about that later. All right. Seven seven five. What's going on? Oh, that's me again, Ghost. Hey, uh, love the show. There's one one other thing I'd like to say. Uh, it almost seems like Obama planned this all out. 
you look at it how he how he ushered in gay marriage and then he gets you know these Islamic terrorists into our country, the Islamic terrorists that fucking hate homosexuals. You know he did this on purpose. This is not. Of course he did. Of course he did. I mean that's what I keep telling people. I'm glad you're starting to realize it. That's what I keep saying. This is a diabolical social engineering plan to bring in totalitarianism, and I think that liberals. Republicans, conservatives, uh, and everybody needs to wake up and realize that, for Christ's sake. Man, these bureaucrats are totalitarian freaks. They want to control our lives, and they are bringing in the problem so they can justify it. Don't you understand that? Europe is the model. It's already happening in Europe, for Christ's sake. I mean, how many times do I got to say this crap? Oh, my God. Anyway, I'm just saying, and look, if you want to uh, talk about something, folks, and you're on cue, uh, push the number one if you actually want to discuss some things, because uh, I don't know if you actually want to discuss some things or don't, uh, if your hand's not up, if you're actually on hold on, uh, you know, the line there. Anyway, folks, uh, 516-453-9903 is the number to call here. Uh, We got 1417. You're on the horn. Looks like an international number. One four one seven six. Hello. Yeah, no, there's no no answer for Christ's sake. Come on, man. I mean, uh, we need we need some people here that want to discuss some things. I mean, is everybody just playing with their goddamn Peter Popper? Five five nine. You're on the horn. Hey, five five Hello. nine. Yeah, you're on the horn, man. What's going on? Hey, how's it going, Ghost? Hey, I want to ask a question mm, pertaining about the birth of ISIS and, and, and this quote-unquote Arab Spring. And, you know, go for it. You know what? I just have a, a, a thing about it is is that you know here are all these failed states and everything here: Syria, here, Tunisia, and all those all those other things that. You know, Obama was uh, was trying to bank on, hey, we want to make uh, we want to make democracies out of this place and stuff. You know, everybody was fruiting off on that. But you know, go ahead, man. Hello. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I, lo- I lost it there for a bit. But you know what? I just have uh, you know, the thing is, 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 I'm starting to regret about you know. Uh, Bashar al-Assad. Everybody wanted to get rid of him and this and that and this and that. But then look what this world has come to nowadays. You know, Europe is uh, is swarmed with quote-unquote refugees, quote-unquote migrants and stuff like that. But, you know, do you have any regrets or, or any any second guessings about, you know, getting rid of Assad or getting rid of these autocratic Regimes but, you like know, that. That, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. And I've actually uh, basically talked about this several shows ago. Uh, at the time, okay, when I was calling for the ouster of Ashad, uh, Assad, this was before the Egyptian wild Jehudi revolution happened. This was before uh, Hillary Rotten Clinton's State Department initiated the overthrow of Gaddafi with help from NATO. Uh, this was before all this Arab Spring nonsense, okay? I mean, I thought Bashar al-Assad was really being harsh to his population, and the images at the time that were coming out of that country were somewhat unbelievable. I mean, I've, I literally saw disgusting images in which Bashar al-Assad's army was ripping people's faces off, I saw literally uh, a, a, a man, you know, literally just kind of bleeding to death with half his face off. I mean, literally, you could just see the inside of the top roof of his mouth. And that, I mean, just disgusting, horrific images of, of brutality, uh, of, of just pure butchery. Now, in retrospect, I mean, I basically reacted to those images because at the time, Bashar al-Assad was uh, trying to suppress political uprisings, which at the time were not violent. They were nothing more than protests, uh, nothing more than people rabble-rousing, 
that's much like what the Arab Spring was later on in the process of this whole domino effect that seemed to have started, uh, I wouldn't even say in Syria. I say that it even started back in 2009 in Iran, and I was broadcasting at that time, folks. You can look back in the archive during the Iranian Revolution of 2009, and I'll say it, and I'll say it again. Yours truly was directly involved with that revolution. I was uh, in conju- I was in co- communication uh, with various leaders of organizers within that particular revolution via a given uh, chat network. I'm not going to give the chat network, but there were a lot of different uh, Iranians at that time in this particular chat network. They were English speaking. Uh, they were westernized, young, young people. And I remember broadcasting at that particular time, folks. And um, I was calling for the Obama administration, who was very new at the time, remember, to at least aid in the assistance of that revolution through clandestine means. Uh, if they're going to funnel in any kind of weaponry, they should have funneled in the weaponry in the 2009 Iranian Revolution, folks. I know people don't remember that, but that's where it all started, folks. All right? I was broadcasting here. Those shows are in the archive. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Look back in that archive, boy. And I said that Obama needs to do something about the Iranian Revolution. And if they're not going to do it, then the United Nations should do something about the Iranian Revolution. And if I said if they didn't do something, then NATO, somebody should have done something about the 2009 Iranian Revolution. And you know what happened, folks? They didn't do nothing. Nobody did anything. And, folks, I said it back then, and look at the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. I said in 2009 when Ahmadinejad and the Ayatollah oppressed the 2009 Iranian Revolution, I said that America would rue the day, that we would rue the day that we didn't do a goddamn thing about the Iranian Revolution and allowed it to be conquered, suppressed, and completely butchered. You know, the individuals that I was communicating with over there that were leaders in the Iranian Revolution were not only killed, all right, but their families were killed. So let me tell you something right now. That's where it goes back to. 2009, the Iranians were on the brink of revolution, and nobody did a god damn thing. I was the only one on this media, on any media, on any goddamn media, I was the only one saying that somebody needed to do something to help the Iranian revolution, even if it was as little as helping in a clandestine capacity, funneling arms into the unarmed Iranian revolution factions, doing something. But folks, nobody did a goddamn thing. And you see, that right there shows what whoever is making the policy, the foreign policy of America, that shows what the approach was as it relates to the Middle East. Because they didn't do anything to Iran, and yet they toppled Egypt, which Egypt was an ally to America. Okay, Mubarak was an ally. He was a secularist Islamist. All right, you've got uh, Muammar Gaddafi, okay? This man was bowing down to not only America, but to the international community. He allowed the IAEA to come into his country to show the world that he did not have weapons of mass destruction. You understand? I mean, he was actually paying uh, compensation to the Lockerbie uh, uh, people that, uh, got, uh, that died in that tragedy. Uh, this man was actually making an attempt to bring himself into the international community. And yet uh, this administration and Hillary Rotten Clinton decided to take him out. All right? And, of course, lest we forget that uh, the first secular government that we took down was Saddam Hussein. 
And Saddam Hussein, of course, was a Ba'athist, which was a secularist political party. And you take out Iraq, you take out Egypt, you take out Libya. This is what you have right here, right now. And you see, at the time, at the time that Bashar al-Assad was oppressing these uh, protesters in opposition to his reign, this Arab Spring was about a year away. All right, this whole uh, uh, nonsense of the Egyptian wild Jehudi revolution was like a year away. All right, I mean, so on and so forth. And little did anyone know the consequence of doing what this administration has done in its foreign policy approach to the Middle East. Because I'm telling you, by them allowing Egypt to fall and them allowing Libya to fall, this is why we have the migration situation all over the world, and moreover, the migrants that are coming into the countries that are allowing them to come in are wild Jehudis, battle-hardened by war, jihadism. I mean, they probably, they probably chopped off numerous heads, and these are the people that are coming into our countries, for Christ's sake. It is a sick, twisted approach. So look, the friend of my enemy, or the enemy of my friend is my friend at this point in time. And at this point, I'm not necessarily saying I regret calling for the ouster of Bashar al-Assad, because what he did was horrific. I've seen the footage. I could not believe it. But now, in retrospect, and now that we see that Islam, for whatever reason, is not a religion of peace, for whatever reason, these people are fanatical. These people will take this religion and kill themselves to kill other people, believing, actually believing, that they're getting into heaven. All right? I think that possibly, and I hate to even make a case for this, all right, but possibly the iron fist ruling of the secular leaders of the Middle East, the Ba'athist Party, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, uh, Mubarak in Egypt, maybe it was a necessity, maybe it was an absolute necessity that these people be so authoritarian in regards to the overrule of these people. Because I don't think that Islam in general respects peace. I don't think they respect uh, love. I don't think they respect any of this stuff. I think the only thing re they respect is fear. And the proof is in the uh, lack of terrorism and the lack of uh, uh, Islamic wild Jehudi jihadism for the amount of time that the secularist Baathist leaders were in charge of the Middle East. So once again, folks, I think that... Uh, you, okay, we talked about the Iranian Revolution, right? 2009, and then after that, all hell broke loose in the Middle East. Look at Iran now. Huh? Look at Iran now. You've got our president giving him $150 plus billion dollars to stop them from building a nuclear weapon, and they're completely ignoring it because they have no respect for this disgusting, filthy president. Giving them $150 billion to stop Iran from building a nuclear weapon. Don't you morons know that $150 billion can buy these idiots a nuclear weapon now, for Christ's sake? They don't even need to build it! Hi, I'm rapper, actor, model Lil Dicky, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about a pretty glaring issue within our society, and that's condom usage. Guys, I think we've gotten pretty laissez-faire about wearing condoms, and to be honest, I find it disgusting. People are having unprotected sex without even batting an eye. It's insane. It doesn't make one shred of sense to me. How can you even enjoy it? I'd be so stressed out the whole time. I won't bore you guys with the stats, but just know that STDs and unintended pregnancies are very real, and there's nothing better than peace of mind, and that's what a Trojan can provide you, the pleasure of protection. So be an adult and put a condom on. I mean, this is how stupid and ridiculous this damn administration has been. And look, I'm glad that every one of my shows are time-dated and archived, because I was here in 2009 telling each and every one of you that we would rue the day that we did not do anything to help the Iranian revolution. We would rue the day, and let me tell you something,
that chicken is coming home to roost right now, boy. And look, like how Donald Trump was taking heat for the tweet yesterday saying, look, Thanks for the congrats about being right about the Islamic terror. I don't want to be right in this regard. It's the same context for me as it relates to the brewing the day that the United States, America, NATO, United Nations did nothing in the Iranian Revolution of 2009. The prognosticator of prognosticator strikes again. All right? The prognosticator of prognosticator strikes again. And I hate to be right in this regard because now we are in a very vulnerable position in America because it seems as if that the bureaucrats that are in power in America, just like they are in Europe, want to destroy the domestic populations for which they are in charge of. And that's why you had the Eurocrats bring in the migrants into Europe, and that's why you've got the Democrats and the liberals bringing in the immigrants into America. Do you understand? They are trying to replace you. They are trying to get a whole new voter base to replace you. Do you understand that's the whole basis of this immigration policy, you mindless morons? Love is not going to conquer all. Do you understand that? I know you're stupid, idiot, moronic, uh, uh, business communist over here. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg tells you that. But why don't you tell Mark Zuckerberg not to spend $50 million in his own personal security every year if he honestly believes that love is going to conquer all, all right? Why don't you tell Mark Zuckerberg to stop doing that? How about that? When Mark Zuckerberg doesn't, I mean, $50 million a year he spends to keep his stupid dumbass safe. Huh? Oh, no, but we need, to, we need to combat ISIS with love. Let me tell you something. This son of a bitch is paying $50 million a year to keep himself safe because he's a part of this crap. He's a part of this crap. He is diabolically a part of this with this liberal regime, and don't you ever forget it. And before I get to Radio Graffiti... Since we're talking about the Egyptian Revolution, all right, do y'all remember I was broadcasting back then, folks, and I was against the Egyptian Revolution. I was against the Libyan uprising, so-called uprising. Even It was nothing more than NATO and the United States arming a bunch of wild ex-Al-Qaeda jihudis to basically uh, invade that country, and that's what happened. Bottom line. But as it relates to Egypt, why did America back up Egypt against Mubarak? Mubarak had been a, an ally of America for a long period of time. Why would they do this? Well, folks, my associate, Roger Stone, which uh, is, used to be a campaign advisor for Trump, now he you know, got out of the campaign because he knows he can do a lot more damage on his own. Roger Stone is basically calling Hillary Clinton out and stating that her aide, Huma Abedin, you know, the woman that's alleged to be possibly her gay lover, uh, you know, they, they stay in hotel rooms together, you know, they stay in the same hotel room for long periods of time, uh, so on and so forth. Anyway, he's claiming that Huma Abedin is a terrorist agent. And look, folks, I even alluded to this even back then. You can look back in the archive. That's why I'm so glad that everything I've ever said is back in the archive. Because I said that Huma Abedin basically is influencing the Egyptian revolution. And I said this back then, baby, 2011, 2010, 2011, I think that's when it was. Uh, take a look at it. I, I'm sure you can find it. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I said it. And why is Huma Abedin a terrorist agent? Folks, her bloodline goes directly into the Muslim Brotherhood. I mean, why do you think the Muslim Brotherhood was embraced by Barack Obama when the Egyptian Revolution, the first one, happened? Because, folks, this was directly in conjunction with the State Department. Huma Abedin has direct influence of what is going on in the State Department. Do you understand that? I mean, she's muff-diving the State Department head, for Christ's sake, literally, all right? 
So that's why I'm saying, folks, all right, that's why I'm saying. Huma Abedin, according to Roger Stone, and I believe this, is a terrorist agent. And I alluded to this back then. The whole reason why this administration is doing this is because of Huma Abedin. This is Anthony Weiner's wife. It makes sense why they're still married, even though Anthony Weiner seems to have a problem showing his wang off on the damn Internet. All right? But I encourage you to go look at the connections of the Muslim Brotherhood and the family connections of Huma Abedin. And you want to know why the Muslim Brotherhood is no longer in charge of Egypt, folks? Because the military had to come in and take control of the government. Now, why would they do that, folks? Why would the goddamn military just completely take control of the government and jail the president, which the uh, Muslim Brotherhood president at the time was Mohammed Morsi, all right? arrest the president, and not to mention arrest all the damn Muslim brotherhoods in parliament and execute these sons of bitches. That's what's happened to the Muslim brotherhood. That's why uh, uh, President Sisi, who's in charge in Egypt right now, was like one of the generals in the military, all right? I mean, the military had to take control of the civilian government because the civilian government was out of control of itself. Now, the reason he, they justified, the military was justified in overtaking Mohammed Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood and take the power away from them is because their uh, secret agencies intercepted a phone call between Mohammed Morsi and uh, Zwahiri from al-Qaeda. Now, I don't know if you've seen uh, Zwahiri is the now guy in charge of whatever's left of al-Qaeda who recently pledged his allegiance to uh, the Taliban. You know, the guy, uh, you know, Zwahiri with the dot on his head. The old man that was always next to Osama bin Laden. That guy, Zwahiri. They intercepted a phone call between Mohammed Morsi and Zwahiri. And that's what justified the military to overtake Egypt from the Muslim Brotherhood. And let me tell you something, folks. Egypt, that's why you don't hear relations with Egypt and America any longer, because uh, Egypt has a warrant out for Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama's arrest. Yeah, I'm not joking. That's why you don't hear nothing out of Egypt anymore. That's why you don't hear nothing about the Egyptian revolution. That's why you don't hear anything about Egyptian news. That's why you don't hear nothing. This Egyptian government knows what our government, this bureaucracy that's in power today, the Democrats, the liberals, they know what they've done. And that's why I'm glad Roger Stone is calling out Huma Abedin for being a terrorist agent. This woman is a terrorist agent that has direct ties with the Muslim Brotherhood, blood ties, family ties. I mean, how much more ties do you need if they're your damn family? And she's a damn terrorist agent. It's no wonder they backstabbed Mubarak, right? It's no wonder why they backstabbed Mubarak. That's what I'm telling you, folks. Why do you think they're not saying anything about Egypt? The mainstream media? Nobody. Because they got off. They want to arrest Barack Obama. They want to arrest Hillary Rotten Clinton. And I say, in my opinion, if Donald Trump becomes elected, I say that we just send them to Egypt, in my opinion. I'm not joking. I say we send Obama and we send Hillary Clinton to Egypt because they're the ones that caused the situation and the destabilization of not only that country, but every country around the Middle East, so that they can be held accountable for their destruction and their incompetence and their ridiculousness. It makes me sick. Anyway, folks, we got a little less than 20 minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and take some radio graffiti calls since uh, we're at the end of the show. Uh, um, I hope this doesn't become a carpet munching Monday uh, with these goddamn radio graffiti calls, for Christ's sake, because I'm serious. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have the patience or the time to be sitting here taking any goddamn troll terrorist cyber vermin crap at this point in time. Do you understand that, you foreskin, muzzle-loving, milky lickers? I hope that you understand that, all right? Now, uh, for y'all folks that are unaware, we are about to enter Radio Graffiti, the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you have to do is give me a call right now at 516-453-9903. 
And when I call on your area code, and unfortunately, folks, I know that people are asking about Skype this, Skype that. Uh, I don't know if you are aware. Uh, Skype has redesigned its whole platform, and I believe that uh, it's not necessarily compatible with not just uh, uh, blog talk radio, but a lot of different formats of uh, uh, websites and uh, other web services that used to, used to integrate Skype services in their platforms. Uh, it's become very confusing, so on and so forth. So I hope uh, Blog Talk Radio finds some level of alternative uh, because I know that there's not just uh, people that want to call in uh, that use Skype, but I know that there are hosts uh, across Blog Talk Radio that uh, would you know, genuinely appreciate if uh, you know, they could start calling in on Skype. I wouldn't call in on Skype, but that's just my personal opinion, all right? Anyway, folks, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get to Radio Graffiti right now. All right, folks, let's go to 732 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Are we starting with Helen Keller deaf mutes all of a sudden, man? Come on, boy. 808 Radio Graffiti. Yo, folks, Clint Capitalist here. Um, firstly, keep going for the third hour for um, the ones who want to yeah, bash the tonic plague and not to mention a lot of talk to them about Mass Pony. But um, another thing, I'm just wondering if um, anyone ever seen the, that one clip with the um, imam of that community in Orlando starts saying, you know, yeah, you don't have to worry. You know, you're, you're safe and all that shit. Well, we'll come back to you in the third hour, and we'll see what's going on, all right, man? How about 310 Radio Graffiti? Hey, is this me? Yeah. Hey, I just wanted to say uh, I'm a real big fan of everything that you're doing. This is Big Time Freedom here. You can go ahead and find me on Twitter. Uh, we got a big problem with ISIS here, and uh, as of this Orlando shooting, I think it needs to be made clear that there were absolutely multiple shooters there, and this was a terrorist cell organization. And uh, I just uh, I hope that your listeners are aware of this. Now, well, I, I uh, tweeted a couple of tweets that uh, an eyewitness said that there was somebody deliberately walk, uh, blocking the door. I did tweet another interview in which, uh, you know, some uh, Latino uh, homosexual – uh, basically alluded to the fact that he uh, got out of the back door and then closed it and purposely blocked the door to keep him and whoever else safe. And he, quote, I pray no one was trying to get out because I wouldn't know what to do with myself. What else do you think they were going to do? So I don't know. I hope that there is no other uh, suspects, but I'm telling you, there were too many people dead. Uh, for it not to be a little bit planned, to say the least. All right. I mean, I'm not. I'm not joking. I mean, this seemed like a planned attack. Is right. 404 Radio Graffiti. Ghost. I think you. Hey, you're cutting off there. You cut off. Well, I mean, you just you just hung up. Jesus Christ. Call back. 727 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Isn't capitalism just a knockoff of socialism? <laughs> well. How, how do you, how do you figure you half a tard? How, how is that a, a, a knockoff of socialism, ass clown? Because Explain to me. Both, enlighten me. They both end in ism, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what? You know what you need to do right now. Uh, whatever's what? underneath your uh, kitchen sink, drink everything that's underneath there. All right? Could you do that for me? <laughs> Will do. All right. Go ahead and do that. I'm telling you, the whole world would appreciate it. You half a tard. Five five nine radio graffiti. Hey, ghost, it's me again from earlier. I just want to thank you for earlier. I didn't know about pressing the number one to starting the queue. I think that's going to help me out, help me a lot, a lot, uh, you know, further on. Cause, uh, yeah, hey, I appreciate you calling in, man. Four one two radio graffiti. His pounds under water, but he doesn't care. You need a better voice, you non-communicative little prick. 435, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, I'm having an orgy with Roger Stone and Hillary Clinton. Would you like to join me in the kitchen? Uh, God, they said, shut up, shut up, shut up. 616, Radio Graffiti. 
Hey, Gus, this is Joe the dog fucker from last week Friday. Thanks for keeping me on the line. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, I appreciate it. How you like that? 907, Radio Graffiti. Uh oh, somebody making a remix of all the characters on the blog talk or on uh, True Capitalist Radio, excuse me. Four six nine radio graffiti. We, we get it, for Christ's sake. I don't appreciate you ple- uh, uh, exploiting me during vulnerable times. 973 Radio Graffiti. Hey, going? Hey, what's going on? Uh, how about uh, 712 Radio Graffiti? What's up, Ghost? Just chilling here with some Johnny Walker Blue Label. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. I hope you do have some Johnny Walker Blue Label, baby, because that's the way to drink. You know you're living lavish. You know you're living fine when you can, uh, you know, drink like a million bucks, baby. You understand? Uh, we got 231 Radio Graffiti. Trump 2016, baby. Trump 2016. That's right. Trump 2016. You're damn right. We got to do it, man. It's that important. It's that damn important. Uh, who else we got? Uh, 973 Radio Graffiti. So, this might piss you off. Um, some random guy who was actually fat, maybe a YouTuber, has like, been in the NBA Finals, and then out of nowhere, at the NBA Finals, he comes out of nowhere, and he like, runs around in his body since Trump sucks. Yeah, this might piss you off, dude. Man, I don't know why. Yeah, I, I saw it. I saw some stupid little uh, California Fruit Bowl go out streak in the middle of the NBA Finals, and who cares, all right? I mean, it's whatever they're putting in the water out there in California. As a matter of fact, uh, they're purposely dumping the water off in the ocean uh, so that they can prohibit people from having water, and I think that may be the problem out there in Fruit Bowl, California, if you want my goddamn opinion. I'm just saying, boy, I'm just saying, all right? 781 Radio Graffiti. Penis, Stephen, penis, Stephen, 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 Stephen. Yeah, uh, that's, that's just great. I'm sure your mother's proud there, you little slut. 909, Raider Graffiti. Christ, what the hell is going on here? Once again, if you want to partake in Radio Graffiti, 516-453-9903. And when I call on your area code, you got three seconds to say whatever you want to say, baby. All right, and if you're on the queue, press one if you want to be called on, all right? I don't know if you want to be called on unless you press the number goddamn one. If you've if you already done so, well, then don't do it again. All right, how about uh, area code uh, 956, Radio Graffiti? Hi, Ghost. Um, is it weird that I've been listening to your show since you quit since 2012? And uh, since I hear trolls like bronies trolling you and, um, like, let me see, like, Goofy Bone and let me see, like, uh, No Party and Freaking Ass Show. Hey, hey, man. Uh, welcome to the party, man. I'm telling you this right now. It's not, it's like I never left, baby. <laughs> it's like I never left. How about 952 Radio Graffiti? No, 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 no. 513 Radio Graffiti. It will be legal in Orlando to shoot a bunch of fruit bowls. A la Akbar. Oh, my God, you son of a You son of a bitch! God damn it! God damn it, it's too soon! Don't you understand that, you damn troll Terran? It's fire, bourbon! It's too soon! It's too soon to be doing that crap! 
about this Alex Hertz guy. He's a cartoon producer who made that Gravity Falls cartoon. He's made some, uh, he made a couple of anti-Trump tweets, you know, bashing in the Donald Trump. Like the recent one he made is he and his friend, like giving two middle fingers to the Hall of Fame star. And another tweet before that, where he calls Donald, like he bashes on Donald Trump fans. Like, every time a Donald Trump fan opens their mouth, a, a foghorn sound emits from that, and a former flies fly, fly out of that. And when his fans, like, tell him not to bash Trump, he calls Trump a self-centered, lying, woman-hating sociopath. And he starts blocking yeah. them. Uh, well, you know what? I mean, that's typical leftist agitation. That's what they do. You know, they sit here, they spew off a bunch of nonsense, and then when you slap their stupid, long-haired, bedwetting, hippie asses into reality, that's when they're like, oh, I got to block them. <laughs> liberal lunacy. Liberal hypocrisy. That's all I got to say to that stupid crap. All right, boy? Jesus Christ. Who else we got here? 404 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, you should do an episode about CARE and how they're encouraging Muslims to not speak to the FBI, their beginnings, their associations with Hamas, all that sort of stuff. People need of to know- course they're not. I mean, there's just too much of this crap to be broadcasting. I mean, people need to realize that Islam is not a religion of peace, all right? I mean, once they realize that and start looking it up for themselves, maybe they'll slap themselves back into reality. I don't know what the hell's going on with this crap, especially these damn fruit bowl liberals. 425 Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ. 813 Radio Graffiti. A restraining order has been filed against John Conquest, who also goes by the alias of Ghost, for the repeat harassment and stalking of presidential candidate Donald Trump. Mr. Trump described it as butt stalker esque and highly disturbing. Do I hear somebody over there? I love Trump ass. Hey, get him the hell out of here, will you please? I'm going to extend my hand that probes Trump's ass. Get him out of here. Throw him out. Are you sh- shoving up your ass? Do not besmirch Donald Trump, and don't splice me with Donald Trump either, you scumbag. You understand that, boy? Don't you dare. Don't you even dare, you scumbag. 281 Radio Graffiti, for Christ's sake. Hey, Ghost, this is ARL Net. I'm a longtime listener. And anyway, so I have something for you to talk about maybe on your third hour, if you've got a moment. All right, go ahead. I'll leave you on the line there. All right, no problem. How about we got uh, 903 Radio Graffiti? Hey, Ghost, I just want to thank you for what you've been doing, giving us the bullet points on the Orlando situation. You've always been a straight shooter, man. Keep up the good work. Hey, man, thank you very much. I really appreciate the uh, kind words, man, seriously. Uh, We got 267 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, what's up? Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, We've got 352 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, oh, Jesus Christ. How about 505, Radio Graffiti? Hey, uh, why are you so mad against Stephen Hawking? Is it because he's in a wheelchair and he's accomplished more than you have? Oh, shove it up your ass. He hasn't accomplished nothing, all right? Somebody's putting whatever the hell he's saying into that damn voice box. I don't believe a word that is coming out of that damn voice box. I don't believe it. 252, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> What you're going on, folks, of the Internet, it 
his eyes a Teutonic plague and welcome to Let's Flick Undertale. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't, don't tell me, please. Don't tell me, please. Please, God, don't tell me. 267 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Um, I want to talk to you about something. All right, well, come back to me in the third hour. How about 269? Hey, Ghost. I was playing Undertale of Teutonic Plague, and he kept commenting on how big your cock was. It was really disturbing. Yeah, yeah, sure. Whatever, you stupid fruit bowl. It sounds like you want to, you know, guess the size of my Johnson, huh? I bet you want to measure the size of my inseam, you son of a bitch. Jesus Christ. One more. One more, for Christ's sake. How about uh, five, five, uh, no, 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 no. How about uh, 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 nine, seven, one, Radio Graffiti? No, it's, it's, just, it's me again. Bring me back to the third hour so we can talk to the Teutonic Plague. Oh, yeah, this is the guy that wants to talk to the Teutonic Plague. All right, yeah, we might have to have a discussion in the third hour here. 808, Radio Graffiti. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, we're about a minute away from ending the live broadcast. Of course, if you want to uh, partake in the third post-show hour, uh, what you got to do is you've got to uh, give us a call right now. 516-453-9903, and uh, there may be a stream out there on the Internet if you can find, but if you want to be live, you got to give us a call here. And if not, it will be uh, ready for download exactly when we finish the broadcast itself, and that's at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost once again folks i want to thank everybody for tuning in with me follow me on twitter folks all right politics ghost is the name to follow all one word no underscores and of course folks i am live every monday through friday 4 p.m central standard time spread it around like wildfire politics ghost baby follow me baby all right i'll see you tomorrow i'm out Hi, I'm rapper actor model Lil Dicky, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about a pretty glaring issue within our society, and that's condom usage. Guys, I think we've gotten pretty laissez-faire about wearing condoms, and to be honest, I find it disgusting. People are having unprotected sex without even batting an eye. It's insane. It doesn't make one shred of sense to me. How can you even enjoy it? I'd be so stressed out the whole time. I won't bore you guys with the stats, but just know that STDs and unintended pregnancies are very real, and there's nothing better than peace of mind, and that's what a Trojan can provide you, the pleasure of protection. So be an adult and put a condom on. All right, we are now in the third hour, which is the post-show edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. If you haven't already done so, I would like to ask everybody to please spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have all kinds of buttons next to you, right next to the player right there. We got Facebook like buttons, all right? Retweet this button. Share this button. Use and abuse those buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking click, for Christ's sake. Anyway, folks, I do want to extend my apologies, whether you're listening live or in the archive. I know that this particular subject matter of the Orlando shooting, uh, as it relates to the elections and uh, uh, the trampling of the Second Amendment, uh, the politicizing, all right, the absolute politicizing of this goddamn ridiculous, uh, uh, of this whole ridiculous immigration policy, the, the, the politicizing of this tragedy in Orlando, I'm sick and tired of it, man. And I'm telling you, the liberals, right now, right now, the liberals, in my personal opinion, have something that they, they, they have a little bit of a pickle on their hand, all right? The liberals have a little bit of a pickle. And that pickle is that it's either Sharia law or it's pro-LGBTQ. You cannot have both, all right? And if you think you can have both, you are 
obviously anesthetized with the liberal lunacy. You understand that? You are anesthetized with the liberal lunacy. You can't have them both. Do you understand that? Love is love. No, it isn't. You are not going to combat ISIS with love, regardless of what this scumbag, imbecilic, totalitarian, technocratic freak Mark Zuckerberg says. All right? You cannot defeat ISIS with love. You cannot prevent them from chopping off your head with love. You cannot prevent them from throwing you off buildings with love. Hey, love did not stop this ridiculous, jihadi, wild, jihudi psychopath, Omar Mateen, with love. They couldn't stop him with love. They had to stop him with bullets. They had to stop him with force. And that's what I'm saying to the LGBTQ. It's time for you to make a decision. Are you going to continue going along with this liberal lunacy that you are going to be able to combat ISIS and Islamic extremism with quote-unquote love? Is that what you're going to continue thinking, boy? Because it ain't going to happen. Do you understand that, you stupid, dumb, milky lickers? You need to make a choice. You're going to continue with the liberal lunacy, or are you going to come down to the Trump train where Trump, and I'm telling you, I'm imploring you, please look at the, after the show, look at the Donald Trump speech today. It is a historic speech, for Christ's sake. If you are a part of the LGBTQ community, it will make you think twice before you start bashing Donald Trump again. I guarantee goddamn to you. And let me tell you, after you look at that speech and you're still bashing Donald Trump, there's something wrong with you, with all due respect. Maybe you need to get yourself checked because maybe you've got a bad case of syphilis and it's getting to your brain. Maybe you've got the advanced stages of the AIDS and it's getting to your brains because I cannot believe if you watch this Donald Trump speech today as anybody, even LGBTQ, and you are still anti-Trump, there is something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. There is something mentally wrong with you. Unless you want to destroy the country. Yeah. Unless your intent is to destroy the country, then there isn't something wrong with you. You're a diabolical psychopath. You're a sick, disgusting, diabolical psychopath. And that's why I'm saying, you Americans out here, you need to start opening your eyes to this crap, boy. You need to start opening your eyes to what's going on here. These communists, these socialists, these leftists, these Democrats, these liberals, they are psychotic. They lie and lie, and they'll smile in your face and continue to lie. And you know what's sad about it? Is that most of these liberals fall hook, line, and sinker and continue to believe it like a bunch of nimrods, like a bunch of mindless minions. They continue to listen to it. What is wrong with you morons? What is your major malfunction, you idiots? Jesus Christ, man. I'm telling you, folks, I, I, I just, uh, I'm telling you, it makes me sick to my stomach. I'll be, I'll be completely honest with you that the liberals out here, I mean, they are trying to do damage control and trying to still salvage this whole, oh, no, you can't be Islamophobic. Oh, no, you can't be this way. It's just one Muslim. And still trying to be bro, uh, pro LGBTQ. You can't be them both. Do you understand that, liberals? You cannot be them both. And if you think you can, once again, there's something wrong with you. I'm telling you this right now. You've got hepatitis, and there's some kind of uh, a lack of uh, enzymes going to your head. I'm not joking. There is something wrong with you. After the speech that Donald Trump gave today, if you're still against Donald Trump, then you are against the country. You are against America. And that's all there is to it, for Christ's sake. By God, Donald Trump's presidency is that important. Do you get it now, folks? Do you get it? Do you feel the importance? Do you feel the importance of this presidency? It is our last stand. It is our last line in the sand. We've got to do something about it. You cannot be on the sidelines in this presidential campaign, folks. You cannot be on the sidelines. It's time for you to get on the front lines. And I've said this time again, time and time again, 
the damn front lines are now outside your door with this tragedy in Orlando. It's proof that the damn liberals brought in the problem and the damn front lines are right outside your door, boy. It's time for you damn Americans to start believing that. It doesn't matter what your goddamn politics is anymore. You understand that? You better start realizing that we're not going to have a country anymore. You understand that? You better start realizing that, or we're not going to have a goddamn country anymore, you stupid, dumbass, milky lickers. What is it going to take? Huh? What is it going to take for you idiots? I don't get it. I'm telling you, liberalism is a disease, all right? It's got to be cut out. It's like cancer. It's, it's disgusting. It's pathetic. Jesus Christ. Anyway, folks, before I get off Keister, let's go to some radio graffiti calls because I don't want to make this an extended, extended hour here. I want to take some radio graffiti calls and get the hell out of here, for Christ's sake. I gave you folks a damn uh, episode yesterday on a Sunday, a random Sunday edition for episode number 287. So for you folks that haven't listened to that, by God, go and listen to it, Blog Talk Radio dot com slash ghost is where you can download that episode and every episode that yours truly has ever conducted since 2008 you can download absolutely free so once again man if you're ever bored there is so much content not just there at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost but all over the internet throughout the world man we've got so much content related to this broadcast user generated comments, blogs, so on and so forth, folks. It's a never-ending story. That's what makes this damn show so beautiful, so exquisite, so original, and I appreciate it, and I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, folks, let's go ahead and get to post-show radio graffiti right now. All right. Now, we had somebody here, 971, are you there? Yep. Didn't you want to say something about the Teutonic Plague here again? Yeah, is he on the line? But first, before you bring him up, did you get uh, my Twitter, my tweet that I sent you? Which one? Uh, well, my Twitter is Border Limit. I sent you a screenshot of uh, what's quite possibly the Teutonic Plague Steam uh, games. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, I believe I did see that. Yeah, I just want to ask him a couple questions about that and something else I wanted to follow up on when that one uh, All right, you out. know what? I actually, when you ask him questions, I'd like to, you know, ask him about why he, the, the masked pony thing. Well, go ahead. Uh, Teutonic Play, you there? Okay, my Steam game list is as follows. Empire, to uh, Empire Total War, Medieval 2 Total War, Mountain Blade Warband, Napoleon Total War, and Dragon Age Origins, the Ultimate Edition. Somebody photoshopped a couple of anime dating sims, what appear to be anime dating sims of some elk, onto my game list. But that is a fake game list, and you can actually look at my game list to prove it. Uh, Kahuta Capitalist tweeted you the real one, and if you don't believe that tweet either, you can go on Steam and look up Teutonic Plague and see for yourself. See my game list for yourself. Uh, I, all right. So, so what else do you want to say? Nine seven one. He already, uh, you know, alluded to the fact that that's a, you know, a, a complete bunch of malarkey. So, what, what else you got to say? Yeah, uh, Teutonic Plague. Before I say anything more, I just want to say I have nothing against you right now. I mean, I feel as if you're a good man, and I respect your views of God and your love of God and capitalism. But I feel like oh, thank there's something you. else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I feel like there might be something that you're hiding from us. Uh, I I can understand how this might be photoshopped, and it probably is. But I so back to when that one guy called you out about uh, when you he said that you play Undertale. Um, you said, and I quote, "I've never heard of Undertale." And then you said, and then you said later, um, "The game doesn't even interest me, man." So what? So you understand where I'm kind of going with this? But how do you Why know would a that? game I've never heard of interest me? Why would a game of which I've never heard interest me? And there was a splice about me uh, and Undertale uh, during this show's radio graffiti, but that was a splice. So, Yeah, no, no. I, I always listen to the, the actual broadcast. Uh, if I don't hear it live, I go to Blog Talk Radio. But 
I'm just I'm confused on how you, you knew that Undertale is a game when you didn't have enough information to judge whether Undertale interests you when you say that you've never heard of it. Well, actually, I kind of was thrown off by that last idiot's call. I have heard of it. I'm sorry for uh, misleading you, but I don't play it. I've heard of it, but I don't play it because it does not interest me. So. Yeah, I, I got you. I'm just, you know, I, I'm on, uh, I'm on the border, as what my Twitter li- uh, Twitter name says. I, I'm ne- neither, I neither like the brown nose or uh, really troll. Um, I'm just, I'm a capitalist. I'm just looking out for what's what's there. And uh, hey, I'm a capitalist I, too, and I'm not. Sorry to cut you off, man, but I'm a capitalist too. And I don't try, actively try to brown nose. I don't say, oh, Ghost, you're so wonderful. I just say, hey, Ghost, I love the show. I respect what you do. Long live capitalism. And another thing, before anybody brings this up, somebody actually created a troll account on a site called furaffinity.com, which I've never heard of until the troll account was created. They used the Teutonic Plague names, uh, claiming that it was mine, but it's a troll account. I have never heard of Fur Affinity until that uh, troll account was created. Somebody said that it was a furry site, and I'm like, oh, no, because I'm not a furry. I'm not. Being so, a furry uh, I is mean, one uh, step uh, away uh, from BCI. Let, 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 let me ask. 971, all right? You're not the only one trying to call out Teutonic Plague. you got a, lot, a whole bunch of people out here in the Internet giving a Teutonic Plague a bunch of haterade. Uh, what is it from your perspective or from people that you uh, maybe affiliate with on the Internet that is given the hatred behind this uh, Teutonic Plague haterade? I'll tell you 100% uh, goes to Teutonic Plague. People want to rip Teutonic Plague a new one because they all hate that. They feel like Teutonic Plague is brown-nosing. Um, I, I don't really think that Teutonic Plague is brown-nosing. I think whenever I hear him come on, he's either telling you about uh, how he's capitalizing or information. Um, and I guess it's from a troll perspective. People just come onto your show and just try to troll you. So when someone's not trolling, they automatically think they're brown nosing. Hey, they might think I'm a brown noser too. Um, I mean, the I'm hater. not. I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's be- So what you're saying is they hate us because they ain't us. They're, because most of these trolls live with, probably live with single mothers. They're living off the government dole. They hate us because they ain't us, man, and that's probably what I think is the crux of it. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I can't, I don't want to put myself, like I said, I'm on the border. I'm not going to be saying, I'm not going to call anybody out, but I just want to Well, you say, know, I, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I know that there's a lot of haterade going towards Teutonic Plague over here. And, uh, you know, I, I don't believe Teutonic Plague, uh, you know, all these uh, Photoshop situations, I don't believe them. He sounds like a very passionate man. Now, Teutonic Plague, now that we're on the third hour, you were talking about, and I don't even really want to discuss this, but you were talking about the masked pony situation. Uh, what is it that you want to discuss now that we're in the third hour as it relates to this uh, the ridiculousness? All right, sir. Well, first off, I kind of got cut off. I said there was a troll account on Fur Affinity, which I... Uh, recently learned as a furry site, and I want to make it clear that I am not a furry. I believe being a furry is one is literally one step away from bestiality. All that's left is for the animals to not be anthropomorphic anymore, not to mention this shit's legal in Canada now, as you know. Yeah, of course. So, uh, so I mean, we, well, well, we, well, we've gotten out of that. We, I, I, I believe it. Don't worry. Uh, what, what's this with right. the whole, yeah. Kahuna Capitalist recently told me that, hey, man, that's not Masked Pony. He left Twitter. Uh, apparently somebody uh, used a bot on him or is trolling him. But, you know, first Masked Pony said, hey, I'm, you know, five days ago. Let me, let me bring it up so I'm not talking out of my, uh, so I'm not talking out of my ass. Let me, let me just, uh, oh, that's my message section. Let me bring this. Okay, here it is. Five days ago, he said, I'm sorry, politics, ghost, and capitalist army. I'll leave you all alone. I'm going to seek professional help to get my life on track. And uh, that's end quote. And one day ago, he said, the government should get rid of all the guns in this country, legal or not. I nearly pooped my diaper when I read the news. And then he said, sad that it happened, but it was the liberals' fault. I pooped myself when I saw the news. 
So if it is Mass Pony, which I don't know if it is or not, since Kahuna Capitalist uh, messaged me saying that it wasn't, if it is Mass Pony, then he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. But if it's not, I really honestly don't know what to make of this, sir. Uh, I mean, I, you know what? I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know, to be honest with you, uh, Teutonic Plague. I think it's a sick, disgusting affiliation with this show, to be honest with you. All right? I don't even want to be reminded of it, to be honest with you. I mean, adult diapers? I mean, there's an adult diaper fetish community out here? I mean, that's sick. That's sick. That's borderline pedophilia, for Christ's sake, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't want anybody affiliated with that kind of crap-ass activity, for Christ's sake. I mean, just thinking about it makes me... Trump-related, and Go I know ahead. you were talking earlier. Yeah, so I know earlier you were talking about how if you hate the speech or if you're still against Donald Trump after t- after today's speech, that you're anti-American. And we've known for a while that the, that the liberal media is extremely anti-American. Uh, and in fact, the Washington Post they have been constantly ragging on on Donald Trump for I don't know what really because I haven't actually had time to watch that speech. But so according to Donald Trump on, on Facebook, and he linked to it on Twitter, he said that based on the incredibly inaccurate coverage and, and reporting of the record-setting Trump campaign, we hereby revoke press credentials of the phony and dishonest Washington Post. So basically, well, Washington Post is no longer invited as a press agency to Trump rallies and events. Uh, you know what? I don't blame Trump, for Christ's sake, because lest we forget, uh, the majority stakeholder in the Washington Post is Fruit Bowl uh, Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos. And let me tell you why Jeff Bezos is so scared of Donald Trump, because Donald Trump knows that this son of a bitch is trying to monopolize the retail industry, and he's got the current administration helping him do it. All right? And Donald Trump knows that. And that's why I have said time and time again, a monopoly cannot survive without government assistance, without the government's enforcement, without the government's coercion, without the government's tax breaks. And that's what's happening. That's why Donald Trump is revoking the Washington Post's press credentials. They're they're no longer a uh, legitimate source of journalism. They are now a, a... distributor of outright lies and slander, all right? 
And that's why Jeff Bezos is trying to sick everybody at the Washington Post after Donald Trump, and they can't find a goddamn thing because Jeff Bezos fears Donald Trump. Because what Donald Trump's going to do when he becomes president, he's going to put an antitrust lawsuit on Amazon.com and basically cut Jeff Bezos down to size. Do you understand this? And that's all there is to it. I mean, this damn Jeff Bezos, the only reason that his company, Amazon.com, has been so successful is because he's not only had federal governments, but state governments and municipalities give him uh, tax breaks, uh, tax abatements, uh, all kinds of favoritism, all kinds of nonsense, and that crap has to stop. That's the only reason why Amazon.com has now got a stronghold on the retail industry is because this government that's ran by Barack Hussein Obama has allowed him to do so. And that's why I'm saying, folks, a monopoly cannot survive in capitalism, in pure capitalism. A monopoly strives and survives in socialism. Don't you ever forget it, boy. Don't you ever forget it. Don't you ever forget that monopolies don't survive in capitalism. They strive and survive in socialism. And that's why I'm saying, folks, we can't have this merging of government and private enterprise because that's where monopolies not only continue but dominate the consumer because the government forces the consumer not to have any other goddamn choice. It's ridiculous. Anyway, man, thanks a lot for that uh, 411 and that info. I'm really glad that Donald Trump is revoking the press credentials of these goddamn ridiculous scumbags out there at the Washington Post. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. Uh, let's see who else we got. We got 951 Radio Graffiti. Hi, Ghost. I wanted to give an input on this whole anime discussion and all these fetishes and all the stuff I've been hearing on Troop Capital Capital Radio recently. And the reason why I bring this up is because I've been doing a bit of research on that. And apparently, there's an entire market on this. I'm looking at artists that, believe it or not, they're making $26,688 a month on Patreon. They're making this amount of money drawing these cartoons. And seems to me that this is quite lucrative. I mean, you know, um, I know about uh, Mass Tony writing a bunch of... Uh, yeah, you know what? Get this. Get him off, for Christ's sake. All right, look. Hey, uh, you, know, uh, you know, if you want to make your money partaking in that kind of ridiculousness and the contributing to the degradation of people's lives and morality, that's your goddamn problem. But look, I'm not going to promote that kind of crap here on the True Capitalist Radio Show. Do you understand that? I guarantee you're not going to hear any of those scumbags that are making all this money uh, drawing pornographic, sick-ass, cartoon fetish trash. You're not going to be hearing them on Forbes magazine. You're not going to be hearing them interviewed at Bloomberg News. You're not going to be hearing them interviewed on uh, Fox Business, for Christ's sake, all right? They're ridiculous, idiot pieces of trash. All right? It's stupid, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. You know what? After that, I'm not, you know what? I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to entertain any more calls after that. I mean, look, I'm sick of the cartoon fetish, uh, the, the, the freaking diaper fetish, the sick-ass twisted crap. I'm sick of it. This brony, this pony, this crap. I'm sick of it all, for Christ's sake. But this is just a symptom of the consequence of single mothers, of liberal America, of the damn liberals infecting the damn social system, the education system. This is a direct consequence of that, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, just take a look at the individuals that are trying to call up and troll yours truly. They don't even know how to communicate. They can't even sputter out a sentence fragment without stumbling and mumbling over their own goddamn tongue, for Christ's sake. I mean, do you understand? This is America, for Christ's sake. And I refuse to continue to do another goddamn goddamn carpet munching Monday, all right? I refuse to do another goddamn carpet munching, or continue, I should say, to do this damn carpet munching Monday. I refuse this crap, all right? I'm serious. I'm not joking, all right? I'm not kidding around. I'm sitting over here. I just gave you idiots a Sunday show yesterday. I gave you idiots a Sunday show, and you're going to agitate me with anime crap? 
I'm not pro-enemy. You're never going to get me on the side of being pro-enemy. You're never going to get me on the side of being pro-cartoon fetish. I don't care how much you try to sit here and, you know, put facts and say, oh, look, there's artists that are actually making a lot of money uh, drawing sexual, twisted, uh, pornographic, perverted cartoons, ghosts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just see if they are uh, actual members that are respected in society. I think being respected amongst your peers, your peers of capitalists, is a lot more than making a couple of dollars off of some two-bit sexual, borderline sexual predator losers, all right? And believe me, I think each and every one of these anime, brony, uh, sick-ass, cartoon-fetished idiots... Uh, they are borderline sexual predators as far as I'm concerned, all right? Borderline sexual predators. Any sick-ass twisted pervert, any cauliflowered cock idiot that sits there and waxes their carrot while they're watching some pornographic cartoon material has got some sick, twisted, sexual-related problems, and somebody needs to get them some help. And if they don't get them some help, I hope they're on some kind of goddamn sexual predator list so that I know that I'm living around these sick freaks. I want to know that I'm living around these sick-ass, twisted perverts. All right, these seat-sniffing, phallic-fluffing, dumbass, sexual, twisted, furry, uh, anime, hentai, pony, cartoon fetish, sick, twisted perverts. I want to know. I would want to know if my children are living around these sick, twisted perverts. I would want to know. So let me tell you something. I'm going to end this damn carpet munching Monday because I'm sick. All right? I'm sick of hearing this crap. I'm sick of people calling me up and reminding me that there are sick, twisted perverts that have called up this broadcast that got diaper fetish and pamper fetishes and all this other crap. I'm sick and tired of these damn anime, hentai, pony, uh, sick, twisted, perverted assholes trying to justify their sick, twisted, perverted fetishes to me. They're never going to break through, all right? Do you understand that? I will never sympathize with a bunch of sick, twisted, anime, uh, fapping perverts, all right? Brony, fapping perverts. I will never sympathize with you people. I will never, ever even give you idiots the time of day. I think y'all are sick, y'all are borderline sexual predator, and I could care less if you're making some goddamn money drawing this sick, twisted crap. You're doing nothing but perpetuating this sick sexual deviousness, a borderline pedophilia, in my personal opinion. That's what you're perpetuating, all right? So you can go ahead and make as much money as you want. Are you going to have the respect of your fellow capitalists? Absolutely not. Are you going to be interviewed uh, in Forbes magazine uh, for what you do? Absolutely not. No one's going to give two rat's asses what you do except these sick-ass, twisted, anime-fapping, hentai-fapping, pony-fapping perverts that should be on a sexual predator's list. Jesus Christ, I'm getting the hell out of here. Go screw you people. You understand that? You dumbass, anime, twisted, brony, sick-ass, twisted, cartoon fetish assholes. Go screw yourselves, all right? I'm getting the hell out of here, for Christ's sake. I'll be here tomorrow for a Taco Tuesday, all right? 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right, you be here, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you're fapping the cartoons, then I don't want you to be here. Get out. Get out of here. Go get your ass out of here. I don't want, to, I don't want any sick-ass perverts and twisted borderline pedophiles, Woody Allen butt-loving pedophiles sitting here and, and listening to me. All right? I mean, y'all are two steps away of being Jared Fogel, flapjack-titted, fruity-ass pedophiles, as far as I'm concerned. And I, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm not continuing this carpet-munching Monday any longer, all right? Anyway, follow me on Twitter, folks. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost, all right? Hey, let me tell you, I, I'm, I'm sick of this crap. I'm sick of this cartoon fetish crap. All right? I'm sick of it. And I don't care what you people think of me. I don't care. I don't care what you think. You people are sick. You people are sick. All right? So I'm getting the hell out of here. All right? 
Tomorrow I'll be back 4 p.m. Central Standard Time for a Taco Tuesday, and hopefully this crap will be a little bit better and less less anime, less hentai, less brony, less cartoon fetish, sexual predator crap. I'm out of here. Hey, I'm a helpful Southern California Honda dealer. You might know us from our random acts of helpfulness. Recently, we gave a veteran a brand new 50cc scooter to help him get to his appointments at the VA hospital. And we can help you get around, too, with a great deal on a reliable, award-winning Honda, like the 2016 Accord LX, a 2016 IIHS top safety pick with a built-in rear-view camera. Click the dealer locator link to find a dealer near you, and go to SoCalHondaDealers.com to suggest a random act of helpfulness for someone you know. Getting lost in the music is great, except if you're driving. Nissan's available Intelligent Safety Shield technologies could help you avoid bad drivers. Hurry into your local Nissan store and get great offers during the Safety Today event. Or shop ChooseNissan.com today. Now, back to the music.